seems to open up with ranges frequently. This should be, there we go. That's more like it. So Indians and Tatars can be played. It is Magyars and Vikings that were sniped out. And this is the entire draft here. Doubt having Indians, Franks, Huns, Bulgarians, Berbers, Ethiopians, Koreans, and Mayans. Leary with Tatars, Slavs, Aztecs, Britons, Saracens, Cumans, Incas, and Vietnamese. Yeah, Cumans not a sieve I think we've seen in the main event so far. I don't even think anyone's drafted them as of yet. I could be wrong on that, obviously. Doubt going for Cattails, Atacama, Sacred Springs as his home map. He gets, I guess he picked Wing and Leary Bandit, or is that the other way around with Leary picking Winged? And Doubt So the order, it's a good question. So this is the way the order goes. Uh, you go pick, pick, ban, ban. So Doubt's mm. first pick was Cattails, Leary picked Haboob. Then Leary gets to ban and Leary bans Kawasan and Doubt banned Winged. So it was not a that big situation sense. and then ban. Yeah, so that was picked that preemptively. Um and I guess, you know, I, I'm kind I'm not surprised that Leary picked Haboob first. I am kind of surprised that Doubt picked Cattails first, because I haven't really seen a lot of positive games from Doubt on Cattails, but maybe he has something prepared and maybe he sends some weakness in Leary's games on that map. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Berbers being used for him on Cattails, either Berbers or you could even justify Huns there. Yeah, man, Huns, Huns are Huns. I mean, after this tournament's over, there's going to be a lot of things to remember, but I think it, Huns have, have been brought back to the limelight a little bit. Um, it's almost, <laughs> for, for Cav Archer and Hun fans, it might actually be kind of disappointing to see Huns performing well, because then the devs are just going to be like, nope, no balance changes, <laughs> you know? They're no fine. balance changes. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then we get back to RM, and people make Cav Archers, and it's just like, it feels so bad. So um, anyways, yeah, I, I kind of like that logic, though, Dave. You've got options there. So I think a way of looking at it is, is the enemy civilization going to be obvious? Um, there are some, like, let, let's say, unfortunately, our most obvious examples, the maps were banned out. But if you can think of, uh, let's say, Tatars and Acclivity. Tatars are beastly on Acclivity. Um, if that is in some way predictable, you could then try and counter that with some type of aggression or a unit which might fare well. It's tough. Oh, Tatars work Tatars work really well on Lowland too. It mm -hmm. feels like a map that they could they have potential on, right? Um Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I'm just wondering where like is Doubt going to go for the Mayans again in Arabia? It didn't work out for him against Yo. Where does he use that civilization? Doesn't seem like too many other options when we're looking at the maps here. Maybe a map like Acclivity, maybe a map like Lowland. Maybe he's just picked them to make Leary think that he's going to play them on Arabia. I and then Koreans. I kind of like. So Leary probably learned some lessons when he played Ethiopians against uh, Aztecs in game one against Hera. And I felt like Leary played a really good game there, and yet Aztecs still ended up stomping. So he said he made some adjustments with how he views that. Uh, he did not pick an archer sieve really early, and Leary's been playing with archer sieves early. So maybe he goes for Vietnamese or Britons, or maybe he goes something like Aztecs. But either way, I feel like Mayans is pretty solid against Aztecs, Britons, and Vietnamese. So with that in mind, maybe Doubt should go Mayans game one, because it's it might struggle on other maps with water and hybrid, and it potentially is is at least 50 50 against some of the sieves that leary might opt to go for remember you do have an extra sieve as well you have an extra sieve that y you don't have to use here so mm -hmm. if it yeah. goes to all seven games anyway one of those might be mayans one of those might be koreans um in <laughs> terms of leary's sieve draft i think one of those might be britons and one of those might be cumans because britons don't seem that strong on empire wars and cumans like i said we haven't really seen um, usage out of them so far in this main event. Yep. Well, everyone, thanks for your patience. I uh, see plenty of trout, so people are apparently ready. <laughs> um, Dave and I are certainly ready as well. And it's been a wild couple of years, man. A lot of tournament finals we've been able to cast, but the first time we've ever seen these two players up against each other at this stage. 
Uh, Doubt did actually win the last time they faced each other in a tournament. It was King of the Desert, and Leary ended up winning that whole tournament anyway. So um, the stage is a lot different, and as Doubt pointed out earlier, and he actually said it kind of sounded like he was he was kind of whining slash crying as he said it. I don't know how to describe his tone, but Nilly pointed out like, hey, didn't you beat Leary last time? And Doubt said, yeah, but it was a best of five. So... I think that he might be a little a little worried that in a best of seven he cannot get four wins against Leary. Yeah, and that's experience talking from Doubt. He's he's played against tons of players that he's considered favorite against, and he's played against mm -hmm. a lot of players where he's considered the underdog, and he knows the difference between a best of three, a best of five, and a best of seven. It becomes exponentially more difficult to beat a player of higher quality um even if you have some hidden strats up your sleeve but i mean i don't think the distance between these two is that big in empire wars maybe in normal rm uh but empire wars doubt is really making a case for himself especially beating the wallalo one champion in yo and then making it look i don't want to say easy but comfortable against ac yeah so if you think about the reign of Viper's dominance, which started, that, that dominance started to shake about eight or nine months ago, um, but he had like a five to six year span, right? Where he was he was winning all these events. Um, they, they weren't all four O's in best of sevens. They weren't all three O's in best of five. Sure, they were there, but he was one or two games better than everyone that he played. And that's... If I were to talk about Leary and Doubt right now, I think that that's kind of where I see things. I think Leary, with his potential, is one or two games better than Doubt in a best of seven, just just on paper. Um, and so that's that's where that worry sets in uh, when there's more games involved. So I agree that the difference is not huge, right? The difference isn't huge with anyone at the top level. It's just getting that extra game or two, which can come down to a civilization strategy choice or or some type of a, a weak moment but dave here's a storyline for you round one doubt was the underdog he had to qualify to even make the event he faced yo he beat yo yo was red bull wola one champion now he gets in and he's in the finals against leary who's red bull wola two champion how sick would it be to win red bull wola three after beating the two previous champions i don't know if you want to bring up that storyline because uh, Doubt's gonna use that if he watches this back. If he wins this, he would you know use how it much anyway. talking, dude. You know how much talking he's gonna do. He's gonna be like chirping for the next twenty years if he wins this. Every single time yep. he talks to Yo, every single time he talks to Leary, he'd be like, "Well, I guess I'm the champion because I beat the champion from number one and number two. <laughs> yeah, he always he always finds a way. Or like, you know, if he ends up winning the finals here. He's just gonna talk. He's like, I'm an old man and I still beat you. You know, one of those things. So yeah, you're you're definitely spot on there. But um a lot of respect. Leary had a lot of respect uh for his opponents, and Doubt has a lot of respect for Leary. And Doubt said that they both know what the situation is. Uh, I don't think they're gonna be hugely shocked in terms of the skill level of one or the other. Uh yeah, Doubt has said he notoriously sorry, go ahead, Dave. Yeah, he said he needed a little break here, guys, so we're just giving him a couple minutes. Leary's already in the game room. We're just waiting for Doubt to arrive. We will give him that. I know the interview took a while, but like you said before, that was his request. He wanted to gloat a little bit, so he yeah, needs true. a little bit of extra time after that and the show match in between his games to rest up and get ready for the final. Should be in soon, though. I think he just joined, so... Yeah, he just joined. Robo's in there with him. Robo's probably barking out orders. Do this, don't do that. You know, the usual, keeping them on top of things. Um, good thing to mention. I think we, we've got to go through some people uh, to thank. Uh, thank you to Red Bull and Take TV. Um, it's been a it's been an interesting event, stressful behind the scenes in various ways, but uh, we've done a great job. I feel everyone to, to put on a decent show. Thank you, viewers. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. Um, you know, all the kind words you've, you've given Dave and Nilly and myself it means a lot. Lil T as well for her work. Um, the the maps, I think, have been great. Um, I, I've really enjoyed the map pool, Dave, and I know that that takes a lot of work. I think Krasini's put in a lot of time and maybe some others there. So just overall, thank you to everybody. All right. Uh, big collective thank you. 
because I will probably miss people, and I've been told that game one has started, which means we are one to two minutes out because there will be a spec delay on all games. And my oh my am I excited, Dave. All right, get your get your predictions in here. Uh, who do you think wins Red Bull Wallow 3? I think it's got to be Leary. And I, I think Doubt will pull out a couple games, um, but it's got to be Leary as the victor for me, maybe 4-2 in this best of seven. But then again, I mean, I predicted Yo versus Doubt wrong. I, I said Yo would take it 3-1 and Nilly did as well. And if you actually watch Nilly's prediction video, he went after the stream yesterday, he went back and changed the title from uh, Red Bull Wallalo 3 predictions to watch this if you want to see how wrong I am. <laughs> so <laughs> the predictions for us casters have been a little bit off and I'm sure the rest of you watching. Tristan, what are you thinking we're gonna see from Leary and Doubt here? I can see the sieves, but I'll just say this as far as predictions go. The safe guess for all the reasons we've talked about for the last 10 minutes is 4-2 for Leary. Doubt can definitely take games off him. That's the safe guess. If Doubt wins, I think this goes to seven games. It is going to be a grind, and I, I would love it to go to seven games regardless. So I would welcome that. Um, Doubt, I'm sure, is not happy to just get second place. He's very close to a big tournament victory. It will be Britons against Ethiopians. So... None of that Mayan action. We will have many, many archers to start off the series. Yeah, Britain's a pick that, you know, has been kind of underwhelming in Empire Wars so far. It, it, I know they had a low win rate in the first one, low win, win rate in the second one, and just a low pick rate in this one. And they're going to be matching up against another archer sieve in the Ethiopians. Faster firing archers for them. Let's see what doubt can manage. Leary with archers really really tough to stop <laughs> like that's the last player you want um yep. with an archer bonus especially something like the britain range all right chat the grand finals are here it's been five days over two weekends of content we are in red bull wallow three finals between doubt and leary who would have thought uh both players no surprise dave opening up with the archer range i want to talk about something real quick leary he goes for this macro approach where he can get up to Castle Age to really push home his advantage. But what he loves to do is go for two archers with fast fletching and sneak into someone's economy. I'm really curious if he's going to try that again. Yeah, I feel like Doubt knows that's his strategy, though, because I, I see some walls coming down for Doubt already. Yeah, there's walls at the back, walls at the front. And it's quick walls too, like with starting villagers, he's trying to prevent Leary from sneaking those units into his base and getting that damage. Also Ethiopians, little bit of a faster opening than Britain's here. Yep, just a little bit. And uh, Del, Del playing safe. You'll see a lot of that. And I think Leary, he'll recognize that Del's so good at that that he'll have to do something similar. Uh, Britain's having the sheep bonus means it can bring in some food here. So that can be helpful. I think this, usually would come down to the bonuses in castle age uh leary just scouting out seeing a doubt has a range seeing a doubts at home and now running away will he move forward will he stay at home leary i think he's gonna stay at home for a bit dave until he gets his walls down well if you've invested all the time and resources into the walls you kind of want them to complete right so you keep your army at home i think he also might have scouted um doubts walling action at the front so maybe he thinks like he can't do much damage with his archers even if he sends them forward both players here going for some pretty impressive base sizes and going for the super super early defensive play not already with 20 some seconds of tc idle time which i don't think he would have wanted but dave you notice he doesn't have fletching yet this is intentional from doubt leary research fletching and yet leary staying at home and that's 100 food and 50 gold right there that will give Doubt a lead to the Castle Age, at least in theory. So maybe those are the types of things that Doubt has to do. He can't go for complete meta shift um, in some situations, but is trying to, to get up to Castle Age a bit faster than Leary can give him some much needed momentum against the Britons. Yeah, and I feel like that's that's the play with Ethiopians, right? Especially, you can wait on Fletching. If Leary, it's it's a fast research to get. If Leary pressures you and you really need it at home, 
you can research it but why not go for the greedy approach if you're going for these walls you also have to consider that when ethiopians get to the next age they get an extra 100 food and 100 gold so you kind of want that in the bank as quickly as possible so you could potentially get your your castle age eco upgrades or your castle age uh unit upgrades as well yeah i like i like delt's build a lot more he went one range production and he just kept it steady and then he'll probably shift into a second range here shortly he's at seven archers leary's at nine but Leary still hasn't clicked up, man. He still has not clicked up to Castle Age. This is huge. Look at the forward wood lines for Doubt. Two of those lumber camps, or, or sorry, for Leary. Two of the lumber camps are there. The berries are there. There's a lot of resources that can be ranged. And Palisade walls do not really hold well against crossbows. Okay. Yeah, this looks like a really good start for Doubt. I, I gladly trade minus two archers for, you know, a minute and a half faster to the Castle Age. <laughs> I take yep. that all day. And apparently Doubt agrees. Doubt's chasing the scout from leary probably not going to catch it did get a free hit before and leary is going to see the archer range garrison with archers no surprise for him i'm really excited to see what leary does to buy himself some time here because if he's able to keep his his eco running and keep his archer number high then it'll be eight range britain crossbows with leary's control or seven range crossbows with doubts control and, you know, Britons versus Ethiopians, even though Ethiopians fire faster in Castle Age, high level players tend to use that range quite well. Here comes Dalp with his group. He is on the way. I The one concern I have for Doubt Space here, as he's immediately making two TCs at home, is that all of his woodlines, Tristan, he's walled between them, but they can all be ranged. Whereas hmm. Leary has three safe woodlines in the back. So if Doubt is going to go for that damage around the wood lines leary can run away if leary um camps units around doubt's wood lines he's okay. gonna be in trouble interesting decision from doubt and this is not something that he did in the previous set this is out of massive respect for his opponent here he's gone for a crazy boom he goes one archer range crossbows he doesn't go for a siege workshop he doesn't go for ballistics he's going immediately for three town centers so i think he's well aware that leary is a threat uh, when it comes to equal micro games. And so he's trying to turn this into a boom game. Ready. Leary close to his upgrades. Leary with some split micro and they're trading evenly. And in the end, Doubt's going to lose everything. Yeah, Doubt may be Ooh. underestimating the fact that as soon as Leary gets to the Castle Age, he gets that extra plus one range. And on Archers, it, it kind of feels like they should be shooting from closer up, but Leary was able to range some of his crossbows. Doubt saving a few yeah. of them though, which could come into play later. I mean, he picked off two crossbows as he was running away. I tell you what though, I just don't, I understand everything that I just said, you know, Doubt wants to gain a boom lead, but he didn't even go three TCs at a time where it felt natural because I've been checking and his TCs have kind of been idle. So at maybe two TCs and two ranges still would have been the play. I mean. If he would have had two range production, he could have stayed at Leary's base. And now Leary has all this military. And this is where he thrives, Dave. Ballistics already on the way. Yeah, and if Doubt's going to go for this, he needs to he needs to be paying attention to his woodlines constantly. He can't afford to take damage on little raids like this because Leary will constantly come back. Leary's shooting the villagers. He gets one, he gets two. That's, that's two too many. Yep. Doubt with the Siege Workshop. So... I mean, he'll have that with some crossbow, and I think he will love to have the same amount of luck he had in the semifinal with the Maganels. And Doubt missing some shots here. This is what happens when you don't have ballistics. But I also really like to move to be a pest there and just be, have some presence with your army. Yeah, look what he's forced Leary to do. He's forced him to come back. Like, Leary could run from woodline to woodline harassing Doubt's eco, but Doubt with those five crossbows over there... Mm -hmm. He's kind of forcing Leary into this. Now Leary's searching for him, and Doubt knows Leary's probably got units roaming around there, so he's running to the edge of the map, trying to avoid them. Leary, though, probably won't let him get away. I mean, Doubt's just buying himself time right now. He has a 10 villager lead, he has 20 on food, and Leary has 8, so... I, this is not something that I was really expecting to say here in a tournament final, uh, but I think Doubt yeah. is out... Vipering Viper strategy from what Viper tried to do against Velez. Like Viper, we were criticizing him so much when he and his set would go for eco with very little military. But Doubt's making it work here and he's making life a little awkward for Leary. Leary's still not really pressuring Doubt at all. 
Yeah, and it's all working for Doubt because Leary didn't send any units forward early, right? So Doubt yeah. didn't have to defend at all. He got away with the greedy strategy. So maybe he had some reads on Leary's playstyle a little bit and he's capitalizing on it. But Leary placing a siege workshop. What, is that? what do we call that? Defensively offensive uh, siege workshop just outside his base. And he's going forward with his crossbows, also dwindling the crossbow numbers from Doubt. So Doubt's not going to have much army to defend against this. Full map control with crossbows. You have ballistics, the enemy doesn't. You know Doubt's camping. I I don't love the Siege Workshop spot. I think it could be further forward. It could give him more of a foothold. We'll see, though. There's plenty of crossbowmen. 31 for Leary with Britons. Yeah, and that Briton range is going to make it so, so tough for Doubt. He's got to notice them right away as soon as they attack. One villager goes down, two villagers go down, three. Uh, oh. Hello? Boy, that was four or five, I think. I guess that's still, by most human standards, a fast reaction time, but in AoE 2, many would consider that slow, and, and that is not what you want when you've gone for the greed. Leary's just going to walk right in here. He's on the hill. Farmers could get picked off. So much could die. Doubt loses uh, Farmer, and he's got this Maganel here, but like, he's got too many armies to focus on right now, Dave. Yeah, he does get a good shot, though, on the crossbows to the left side of his base with the Mangonel, and he killed the scout. So the Mangonel not being killed there. He's trying to engage with the crossbows and the Mangonel. This is a dicey spot for Leary. I don't care how good Leary's micro is. This is hard. Oh, man. And Doubt's greed may be paying off a little bit. Now, the thing you have to point out is that after this engagement, it is 67 villagers for 61. And there's still 27 crossbows for Leary. So it looks good when you see the kills. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. But in reality, the situation is still horrible for Doubt. Well, Doubt's finally dropping some more archer inches for production. And Leary splits away at the last second, but still takes some rocks to the dome. He's going to retreat. Doesn't want to mess with that Mangonel currently. And he's going to camp on that hill in the front, still denying the farms from Doubt. This is the issue. What are, you, what are you tech switching into here? What's your late game plan with Ethiopians? I suppose the plan is is dependent on taking out the crossbows and then going into your own crossbows. Oh, Leary. Oh, he's dodged. There's two Maganels there and Doubt separated them and Leary, yeah, easy as you like. Takes down that Maganel and the next one could be easy as well. He splits again and Doubt sends his fills out to repair. And now Leary arrives with his own Maganels. Oh boy, Doubt. You put yourself in this this very defensive position and Leary is just destroying you. Yeah, and the villager count won't be there for, or the villager lead won't be there for long if this keeps up. I think Leary's got an army through the back there. Yeah, came through the palisade while denying more farms and is going to be able to pick more villagers off the woodline. Doubt with a mass exodus over to the right side. Meanwhile, his initial archer range is being killed. Villagers are still being picked off. Leary with impeccable micro here. It's, there's, there's, okay. Leary, insanely good with micro and, and Britain certainly helps here. But I, I also, and it's easy to say now, I just don't think that this was Doubt's greatest strategy choice he could have gone for. Probably didn't expect to be encapsulated so quick. But man, the confidence that Leary goes at counter units is just insane. That's siege, that's supposed to counter crossbows. He doesn't care. He does not care at all. So, so it feels so tough to fight against uh, Britain crossbows with Mangonels because you only have the seven range. They've got eight. And if they use them effectively, they can take really, really decent trades. Leary microing like a god, taking out the crossbows, not letting the Mangonels shoot. And he's got four Mangonels of his own on the front side. Oh my God, this micro. Like, Leary makes the game so fun to watch. He's got other forces. He's still killing villagers with the other force people. He's dodging with the Maganels. Are you kidding me? This is sick. And then he dodges again. Like, I can't believe this. This went from, from 60 to 100 real quick. It's 60 was already impressive, but oh my God, Dodge is getting slaughtered here, Dave. Sick sequence of micro, sick player. The defending champion showing why he was champion in Red Bull Lolo, uh, Red Bull Lolo 2, excuse me. My God, what a statement. Yeah, I mean, imagine sitting on that hill with 10 crossbows, well, microing them against two mangonels and like six crossbows from doubt and coming yep. out even in the fight. 
And then behind that, you add a siege workshop. You start sending mangonels forward. You send another army to the back, bust through two walls while you're fighting the mangonels at the front. You're fighting the mangonel at the back at the same time and picking off villagers. Super impressive um, stuff from Leary. Wow. Can can we just go back to Leary's eco for a second? I just want to show Leary's eco. Um, if that were me, first off, micro would be worse. My farms wouldn't have mills like that. They wouldn't be perfectly placed. How is he? How does he have precise economy while doing that? That's what's impressive because there's a lot of people who can micro nerd, but then their TCs are idle. Then their villagers are idle. Leary had two minutes and 53 seconds of TC idle time that entire game. Doubt had seven minutes. And Leary had 20 minutes of idle villager time collectively throughout that game. And, and Doubt had one hour and 12 minutes. Disgusting, Dave. Let's go to the stats. Um, 82 units killed for Leary. At 33 units lost with the largest army. And we'll talk about that. Doubt decided to go for low army. Didn't work. Uh, more food, more wood, and more gold collected or Leary as well, and now we have to talk about, um, or think about game two. D Dave, I just, I'm trying to find words to explain what I'm thinking here, uh, so bear with me. But I think Doubt, he committed too much to one side. So for example, let's say aggression. Four range is all in one TC. That is probably too much commitment towards aggression, because then your eco is going to be bad. And I think in this case, it was the other end of the spectrum, Doubt committed too heavily to a boom. And I truly think with that faster cast age, he could have actually gone to range crossbow into maybe a faster second TC instead of rushing everything so quickly. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it totally makes sense. I think he needed a second range earlier, Tristan. He had yeah. one range. Like, he had three TCs. He was adding a university. Uh, and he still only had one range. Mm -hmm. So it feels like he could have got some production out. Maybe even skirmishers, an option with the amount of food income yeah. he had. Maybe idle one of the TCs and, and make some skirms. It's it's so tough, though, against Leary because you feel like you're in an okay position. You know, you see one yeah. group of crossbows, maybe 10 of them, and you have two mangonels. So you're like, yeah, I can, I can hold this. And I know he doesn't have three TCs as fast as me. I know I was up earlier, so I probably have a better economy. But then suddenly that 10 crossbow army, there's one at the front. There's one at the back. There's three mangonels supporting yep. it. And there's a nonstop flood of units. It just spirals out of control with Leary. That's how excellent of a player he is. And you have to ride that line if you're in Doubt's position. You have to make the perfect amount of eco and the perfect amount of military. And it's it's not easy. Like, it's not easy at all. It, it yeah. takes perfect judgment, and it takes great execution. I think Leary's, Leary's dominance made Doubt go for that that crazy greedy approach but he'll learn from that he'll know and i'm surprised to see he's gone to sacred springs for his home map there's a lot of other home maps available uh, but he's immediately gone for that and actually maybe i shouldn't be surprised because his very first civ pick was actually indians, indians. Yeah. so indian villagers do have a shorefish bonus and i've seen doubt play this map before and there's a lot of shorefish on it and even with huns he loved to to get that food income um leary is going for Aztecs, probably expecting Doubt to have Indians. Uh, a matchup where if there weren't Shorefish, I think you'd heavily prefer Aztecs. But I don't know if Aztecs are all that strong on this map. You need a lot of mobility. Are you surprised that Leary didn't even... Neither one of these players drafted Khmer. Like, it feels like surprising. a good pick against... Uh, well, maybe not against Indians on this map, if you're thinking about it. Maybe Khmer... Yeah, that, that's you true. Know, Hmm. Yeah, but like Atacama, I guess, I guess Leary's gonna prefer something like Slavs on Atacama, which is why he went that route. And Doubt will prefer Franks or Berbers. Bulgarians. Yeah, or that too. Um, Atacama. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 he, he was super impressive with Bulgarians. Who knows? We might even see the Koreans on Atacama. I don't know what to see from Doubt anymore, or what yeah. to expect from him. But this one will be Aztecs versus Indians on Sacred Springs. We've seen this map quite a few times in the main event and we should be into the game any second now all right so again getting your villagers on the shorefish an important key here uh villagers on shorefish just normal villagers on shorefish is one of the fastest food collections in the game uh you can bring in food very quickly indians just have a bonus there so indians even faster 
The problem for Indians is going to be getting scouts out against something like Spear Eagle. Indians just straight up die against Eagle Warrior and Pikeman in Castle Age. So Doubt needs to get a big lead in Feudal. And there's Leary's base. And then you'll see Doubt's base on the other side. And action begins. Mm -hmm. And Leary is opening with an archer range. Doubt opening with a defensive tower on the fish. And you were talking about that gather rate. He also has a stable at his base. We didn't point that out. You're talking about that gather rate. It's so strong for the Indians that you absolutely want to protect that position. So I 100% I yep. agree with the defensive tower from Doubt there. I'm wondering if Leary's going to go for a second barracks real early. Because Archer's great, of course. But if you just go heavy spear eagle... It's really tough for scouts to engage. Doubt is really fantastic when it comes to using scouts and using mobility, picking off bills, and that extends to his knights and camels and castellage. So I think that Doubt needs to kind of avoid what Leary's going for. And Leary's already here with an archer, and he's going to try and force yep. the fight. Well, Doubt's going to try and force the fight, I think, up at the top where Leary is walling off his fish. You just saw Tato try and wall off the fish, and it takes a lot of effort, and Doubt is here with some scouts. There's already a weak villager there. We can't quite see the scout behind the scenes there, but he does get the villager pick, and then the other scout is going to get another villager kill here, Tristan. No! He walled it! What happened there? I think it's hard to see what's going on there because of the, the little monument, so Leary keeps the villager alive, and, and Doubt fortunately did not lose too much at his base. Leary also... Eagle underneath the TC. That's a donation, and that's that's a mistake from Leary. Great play from Leary, Dave. But then again, he's playing wall nothing in the north. His villagers aren't collecting shorefish, so I think Doubt's fine with that. Now he's creating a little maze, and it's going to take him a while to get out of the maze and to the mill. But no more potential for damage there from Doubt. I'm wondering if that scout is actually stuck between the two relics in the wall. <laughs> or he just forgot about it? That is really weird. Well, right now he's focused at home because the archers are giving him problems. He's trying to mix in skirms. Uh, I say skirms plural. He just now has two, and that wood line's looking really messy. I haven't seen Doubt be able to really use his scouts at Leary's base yet. He did get three villager kills, though. Two or three. I, uh, two villager kills for Doubt. It, it was two, yep. Place, so. He did get two kills. Leary has not gotten any yet, and Leary's losing his archer numbers at Doubt's Woodline. And now Doubt and Garrison's more scouts. He's going to join up with his other two, and he's going to use the mobility, loop around Leary's base, and see what he can pick off. Leary hasn't done any damage to Doubt's economy. I mean, he's he's idled, yeah. but Doubt still has the shorefish bonus, and he has the stronger economy right now. And I, I would prefer to have scouts on a map like this doubt even getting forging right now leary could be in big trouble and oh i think he's going greed dave look at that he's making a market next to his archer range and so that tells me that he's going to try and get castle asap doubt needs to hit him fast yikes though doubt's getting forging and look at the amount of scout numbers from him and skirms coming behind too so if leary makes spears Doubt could potentially snipe those down. Doubt's going to see the market. He's going to know what's up, but he can take an engagement here, Tristan, as soon as the spears catch up. And if he wipes up the army here from Leary, suddenly Leary's off gold. Sounds crazy, but I think Leary needs to pull villagers and fight. You, you want Doubt, yeah. you prefer Doubt to get two or three vill picks and then your army, because if your army goes down, then you're still going to lose villagers anyways. And the forging upgrade paying off and Doubt is slaughtering Leary here. He's killing more villagers. And he's also forcing a tower on gold, and I just don't see what Leary's game plan is going to be with Aztecs from this position. Yeah, and I think Doubt is just going to camp those skirmishers maybe under that tower. Villagers can take them out eventually, but he's going to kill some spearmen. His scouts are going to get away, and wow, what superb early pressure from Doubt here. Using the Indian food collection bonus to its finest, getting the scout production, getting forging early, and look at the difference in villager kills. Four for Doubt, zero for Leary. Hey, has Leary, have you, do you remember Leary playing this map at all? Did he play it against Terra? Did he play it against any players in this tournament? Do you know? I can't remember. I can't remember, Dude, but he I'm hasn't looking gone, at the like, castle age. Oh, go ahead. I'm just like, He's not on Shorefish, and he made no real attempt to get back to Shorefish, you know? And that, to me, is, while well, full credit to Doubt for taking advantage of it, it is really questionable from Leary. I mean, Doubt is on the way to Castle Age, and he has a massive lead. 
Yeah, he has a huge lead. I mean, economic, timing, military, everything currently. Although Leary has added another barracks, so he's going to go into the Eagles, but doubt mm -hmm. on three stables, Tristan. So we're going to see potentially a flood here, and maybe in the Castle Age we'll see some villagers go out to the other shorefish so doubt can get even more food to produce yeah no i think it's a good play also doubt research horse color super early so he also has some farming eco it's not all in shorefish we, we mentioned uh before the game launched up that indians really don't have a counter to eagle and pikeman and i think that's why doubt is planning on going all in he's gonna make as many camels as possible indians do not get knights he's even making scouts right now uh they're there is potential for Leary, and that simply comes down to the fact that if it's even in the mid game, it's a Civ win for Aztecs. I, that, it is confirmed that that scout at the top was stuck because Doubt has been trying to fight his way out of the walls <laughs> this entire time. So Leary not only saved his villager, but walled the scout in from Doubt. So a doubly impressive play from him earlier up there. But Doubt is in the castle age. He's getting the light cav tech, and as Leary adds a third barracks. I like the light cap tech here. Leary doesn't have the resources to get his upgrades, Dave. He's got attack and defense, and when he reaches Castle Age, then his eagles will have four plus four. Uh, but, I mean, I guess it's a good thing he's walled currently because he really does not seem to have the upgrades, or it doesn't look like he's going to have the upgrades as Doubt's camels come across the, the map. Could you justify with Indians? Indians do get supplies. Could you justify going into longswords here? Maybe like double barracks longswords? Some for yes. defense and then you could push across the map with them? Yes, but not now. I think you you can do well with camel light cap for now, which Doubt is doing. And then you try and get a lead. And then to cement your control in late castle, then you can go for longswords. That would be my thought on it. Leary's just going to run across here. This is a really risky move. He's only defending with walls. Doubt has so many units outside of these walls. And Leary's going to go for a raid. He, if he were to kill villagers, I would really start to believe that Leary could do this. Yeah, they're only Eagle Scouts at the moment, though, and they only have the plus one armor. So you should go in. It will be a surprise for Doubt to see this. Let's see if he notices oh, right away. Oh, he does. Quick walls. He notices right away, Dave. How many villagers go down? House wall from Doubt. He's still missing a palisade there. No, he's not. The gold's still exposed. Yeah, he is missing palisades. Leary hasn't engaged against it because Leary has to defend at home at the same time where there's pikemen, lightcap, and camels, and both players committing to the engagement. Does Leary have enough? I don't think he does. I think Doubt's going to win this engagement. Leary could eventually clear it up, though, with the pikemen production from his barracks, but Doubt might potentially get inside the gates, and he's definitely depleting the armory numbers. However, at Doubt's base, Leary killing a couple villagers. Oh, man, I mean, it hasn't been that strong from Doubt. I consider him ahead, and he might be able to snipe a villa or two here, which he should. But he's not massively ahead right now, and, and so the thought starts to creep into your mind. If this game continues, and it's Pikeman and Eagle, what do Indians do, Dave? You mentioned maybe Longswords. I think that Doubt's play is uh, to take advantage of the extra shorefish if he can and start going for TCs, maybe gain a Vill lead and then go into Longsword later. Yeah, and we can see Leary's plan right now. He's adding the fourth barracks. So he's got a lot of villagers on gold and he's banking on the barracks production uh, to set him free from his base here. Going for a siege workshop. So maybe think about pressuring Doubt a little bit. Back at home, Doubt is investing into a second town center on the main wood line. <laughs> Uh, also, Doubt making two ranges and making Cav Archers at home. Excuse me, that's going to be his third range that he completes. And uh, again, the conversation of Cav Archers comes up. So I want to bring up, I remember Doubt playing Huns vs. Aztecs in qualifier for, I think, NAC2, which was a couple years ago. And the, his best answer to Pikeman Eagle was actually Cav Archers. He needed a lot of them. But he got to 30, and 30 can deal with the Eagles, and they can definitely deal with the Pikemen. The problem is, Dave, and this is this is what we said with CA, it just takes time to get that mask going, and he might not have that time. Yeah, he realizes that, though. I mean, you listen to his interview um, after his win today, and he said, Cav Archers are great if you have a lot of them, but 
they suck for hit and run. So he's going to yep. build up his numbers, try not to lose them too early. He's also going to try and raid Leary a little bit. I saw he got a villager kill at Leary's base, and he's following this army back across the map while he's collecting relics from all the shrines. I noticed that. Yeah, uh, something I didn't really think about except for when the scout got trapped because Aztecs will want to take that area, and that's the reason to maybe pick Aztecs here, Dave. Aliri with some pressure here, Doubt with some villagers exposed. Now, it does have the military to deal with this. The tower helps, the light cav, the cav archers should deal with this. But it just seems like this game is a bit, it's a bit awkward for Doubt. I'd say he has the lead, but there's always that thought of what do Indians do against Aztecs? Yeah, especially with Leary being on a second TC. So he's moved away from that whole, you know, toss everything on gold for barracks spam unit production. And he's gone more towards a balanced approach. I think he realizes he did enough damage on Doubt's Woodline there, killing a few villagers and killing the initial army um, to get himself in a position where he can start balancing his eco. However, Doubt is getting himself into a position where he's starting to have a dangerous amount of cavalry archers. And we'll see if Leary can come up with an answer to that. Yeah, cav archers, I, I am not convinced with the unit in all situations, but I think this is his best play. Longsword would be too slow. Doubt there loses the monk as he was trying to take that one relic. The Eagles do have chain barding armor now for Leary, though, so they won't hesitate as much when it comes to these engagements. But do you remember watching Doubt play game one against ACCM with his CA? He'd send like three or four CA, hit a woodline or hit some farms, and then run away. And that's what he's going to try and do right now to Leary. This is typical Doubt. Yeah, Doubt's macro is fantastic. And he's able to control multiple groups of armies on every different resource. And he knows that if he's hitting Leary over here, he's hitting Leary at the back, he's hitting Leary at the front. If nothing else, it's dividing Leary's attention and kind of pulling away from uh, his game plan. Yep, and, and that's, that's what gives him the option to then attack on the other side. Because Leary's focused on the left, the doubt shows up on the right. Indian villagers, very cheap at this point so it's easier for indians to boom and doubt getting a few vil picks there underneath the tc and it's just like him it doesn't cost gold so it's more than worth it to get these snipes suddenly doubt with zero idle time 66 villagers leary with idle time 57 villagers yeah and doubt's trying to snipe those scorpions a ram also coming forward with infantry garrison in it doubt pulls away the villagers i think just on time he's only gonna lose a couple there rather than all and he should probably be able to defend against this push. The scorpions are the real problem. There's three of them in there. And if he doesn't take care of them, what is he doing with that monk? <laughs> uh, scorpions are pretty good against cav archers, actually. That's the type of push that Leary wants. He wants siege, eagles, and a mass in one spot. Whereas Doubt wants to use his mobility more. Now, taking some hits here, Dave, and some unnecessary ones, but he will hold on. Uh, actually, will he hold on? It's 25 military for Leary and only 16 for Doubt. I think he will. Yeah, he'll he'll hold on here. Unless Leary has another 20 eagles coming out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. Damage. I mean, Doubt, uh, another benefit of going for those relics is even if his cav archers get weak, he can always heal them up. So Leary is just getting pokes at them. He's not getting a, a lot of kills. And that massive CA keeps climbing for Doubt. Although here comes some more eagles on the top side. For Leary, he's going to harass the villagers a little bit. Doubt is ahead by 10 vills, but that might lessen as Leary keeps up with the raids. No, Doubt's going to push it away. Good job. All right, so Doubt's got TCs here in defense. He has Cav Archers, which is also ranged. Of course, his TCs benefit from Bodkin. So especially if he gets Ballistics, which I see is he's now making the university, he'll be in a good spot. What should Leary do? Like Leary, in late game, is going to have the better civilization, but the CA are becoming a problem. What can he think of to change the the dimensions of this game? I think he's going to have to find exposed areas of, of Doubt's eco, right? And if you're Doubt, you know that. So you're going to be defending with the CA as much as you can. And you see it happens right here. Leary tries to pick off villagers, but Doubt's there when defense, slowly building up his numbers. Also important to note, Doubt has five relics now, Tristan. It's crazy. And if he gets the unique tech, I forget the name, uh, but the unique tech from Indians later, it, it actually increases the golden come from the relics as well. So 
plenty of gold in the middle, which Dow also has secured. I think Leary's approach of using small groups of eagles and sultans, thank you. Uh, using the small groups of eagles to snipe fields is good, but he's got to do a better job because Dow, in an ideal world, is going to have one big clump of CA. And Leary should well, not here. allow that clump of CA to get pickoffs like that. Yeah, and here comes Leary into the woodline from Doubt, so he's going to get a couple villager kills here. Those eagles are pretty weak, though, so once the CA come over, they should be able to deal with them fine. Doubt's uh -oh. getting up to a scary number here, but Leary's pushing him with siege, eagles, and pikes of his own. Yeah, this is it for Leary. He kills Vils in one area, he goes in, he kills Vils in another area. He's got four scorpions and a ram, a bunch of pikes, a bunch of eagles, though I don't think... He has them all grouped together right now, and he's going for the second Castle Age attack upgrade too. No doubt is on Stone Dave. He might be thinking about a defensive castle soon. Yeah, I saw him on Stone earlier when he was applying pressure, and it made me a little bit nervous, Tristan, because <laughs> I was thinking maybe he would try for something a bit more aggressive. But yeah, in this situation, probably a defensive castle. Scorpion's coming in. Doubt has to make sure he doesn't get nuked by those and i believe he added a siege workshop so we may see a mangonel from him soon yep mackinel is on the way dave it's leary's approaches take out the archer ranges if i take out the archer ranges he can't make many cab archers and it's 39 military for 37 what a game here i mean game one was amazing from leary game two doubt showing what he can do on the non-arabia maps and is this is anyone's to win yeah, almost has enough ca or stone for a castle now as Leary is taking out the production buildings from Doubt. Doubt has to deal with that, either build some more or take out this army. Does have a couple mangonels in defense, so we'll see if he can get some good shots. But he doesn't really have the food eco um, he needs to be thinking about going up to the next stage unless he's buying it with the market. Yeah, that's, that's the problem. And I think that changed when the raid started. Ooh. Agonel goes down, but Doubt's still getting some good kills here, I think. Yeah, Doubt got a really, really good splash damage on the Eagles there. So they're going to be a bit weak heading in towards these Cab Archers, and they can pick them off. Another good shot with the Mangonel taking out a Scorpion. Those things are the threat, and here's the Castle, Tristan. It's on the gold there, and it secures a 36 good Cab Archers. 36 Cab Archers. I think that's the number that Doubt needs. And he could also, he could sit right behind these gold tiles, so it's impossible for the eagles to engage. Cav archers, not so bad after all. And, and Doubt's castle will also range some of the gold villagers for Leary. So Leary's going to have to reposition both players thinking of clicking up to Imp. Oh, uh, yikes. But yeah, Leary's so good at this. Every time we switch back to Doubt's base there's some villagers dying to eagles and doubt lost a few more now the villager difference only two tristan and leary i think is going for something on the top side i see a stream of yellow coming across is that a forward castle to the north uh forward castle no it's a tc more like a tc i wonder if he's gonna sell food here yeah leary's selling food he's trying to up to imp doubt probably needs to buy some food honestly this uh, Cav archers can work well in this spot if you get to Bracer and Chemistry before the Eagles are elite. That's that's what you would want to do. And they're both imping at the same time. Oh my God. Uh, well, uh, it's going to be close then in Imp Dave. That's that's the power of five relics for you right there. <laughs> Giving Doe a nice little boost so he can buy his way up to the next stage. Leary coming in with another raid here. Doe needs to do something to like block this off. Either wall the all of the right side or wall the back or something because Leary will not stop with these raids as long as he keeps getting success. I, I, I agree and disagree. I think what Doubt really needs is to have something that's so devastating that Leary has to pull everything he has in defense and this might be it. Another castle from Doubt right on that new town center that fresh TC from Leary. Honestly, what's to stop Doubt from moving in with the right now? What was that Mangonel doing in Leary's base? Did you see that? I saw it earlier. <laughs> yeah, I did. And, and Leary's villagers what? don't know where to go right now. <laughs> yeah, Leary running away with those villagers. And, you know, the Cab Archer's going to be sitting right there. Leary sacrifices his university, deletes it so he can get a better position and escape with his villagers and is trying to get some good shots. He gets a great shot there with the Mangonel. That was... Not sure, is that Cav Archers or is that Doubt not paying attention? It, he's getting Thumb Ring now, so this, he'll be able to fire a lot faster, Dave, but a lot of those Cav Archers are weak. 
I think Dalt needs Wait, to think on. about a fast chemistry upgrade and mixing in hand cannons. I love I love so much that he's gone back to those shorefish or the box turtles or whatever they are. He's using that Indian bonus. Now that he's secured that side of the map, he's going to send a ton of villagers there. We were talking about his foodie coat, maybe not being up to snuff, not enough farms. This is going to supplement that. And that's going to give him some resources to get the technologies he needs. Hal just splits away from the Maganels there. And Leary has just enough to get Elite Eagle. That is... 50 seconds away. Dalt's bracer upgrade is about 30 seconds away. Dave, I think Leary, if he's going to win this game, he needs to forget about the CA for the next two minutes. Send half your eagles to the left, half your eagles to the right, split them up, and go for Dalt's eco first, and make that second wave about the cab archers. Yeah, and use your mobility. Anytime that giant ball of cab archers shows up, just leave. Good Manganel attempt from Leary there. Doubt continuously microing, but he can't take many more shots on that ball. There's a lot of weak cab archers in there. Yeah, Doubt trying to force an engagement against the Eagles before plate barring or uh, plate mail comes in, which is important. But I think when that's in, the cab archers become a whole lot less of a threat. And I have to say, I'm I'm surprised that we have made it this far. It looked like Doubt was going to win very early on. It then looked like. Leary was going to dominate, and this has been a back-and-forth game, and currently Leary's looking for Doubt, and he is nowhere to be found. Yeah, Doubt's going into the back of Leary's base, but there's a potential here. If Leary has army on the left side and army on the right side, there's a potential for Doubt's main force to be trapped, but we can see more Cav Archers behind, so even if he loses this one, he's going to have another ball of units waiting. Heavy Cav Archer on the way. That is an expensive upgrade. There could also be hand cannons. I think this is a misplay from Leary. I'm very surprised that he's chasing this with everything he has. Imagine if he were to go to the Shorefish with Eagles, Dave. Mm -hmm. He might be doing that right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Doubt. That's going to be brutal. So much to look at right now. And then the Cav Archer's oh. in the back of Leary's base. I'm surprised Doubt noticed that on the fish so fast he pulled them away right away very impressive stuff but once again leary getting some great hits on the cab archers heavy cab archer is now in and the castle might be completed to cut off their oh. escape path oh. oh god it was so close and that was just sitting on top of the foundation it was a university actually but i think doubt's cab archers they might be heavy but they're just gonna fall fall faster now dave oh god Out though, Crazy, man. doing significant damage. Yep, significant damage. Leary was chasing that one army with all of his eco, or sorry, eagles, and Doubt sends in another one to Leary's economy. But two mangonels coming in here. Doubt needs to notice. He does notice, and he splits. Now he's still underneath the TC, but mangonels should be easy to take out. And Leary with attack rounds, and Leary. Uh, ooh, oh, okay. Uh, Doubt will like that engagement, Dave. He'll like it a lot. Yeah, Doubt will, and. Look at another army of cab archers, Tristan. Every time Leary <laughs> takes them out, Doubt's got more following up. This is so impressive. No one else has really been able to make cab archers work on any other map than Kawasan, except Doubt. He's got some hidden tricks up his sleeves, and he's showing that Indians can match up very well against Aztecs in this situation. He has 45 of them, and he continues to pressure. 45 heavy cab archers? They can beat elite eagles, and Leary doesn't have the eco to get the uh, elite skirm upgrade. Oh god, oh, a doubt. 32 units were stacked there, so I don't know if that's better for him or worse for him. It still looks like he's going to get out of here just fine. And Leary, 87 population. Doubt, 160 population with every single relic. No, excuse me, not every single relic, but almost every single relic, Dave. What a freaking response from Doubt. I'm loving this. Mm -hmm. And... He has all the gold control, Tristan. Where Where's Leary getting gold? Doubt's cut off the one side with the castle, cut off the other side with the castle, raiding the villagers taking gold with cav archers. Super impressive stuff from him. The only weakness maybe for Doubt right now is his food economy. Only 15 on food, so can't really produce light cav if he wants to tech into that. Only a few on the field currently, but who needs light cav when you have like 11 archer rangers or something producing heavy cav archers? Cav archers are still, they're, they're still a decent unit. They're still tanky. They're still mobile. Maybe Doubt's the best player to show you how to use them. I am, I'm shocked at how well these things have scaled into the late game, despite being a Cav Archer fan myself. 
I am shocked at how much control Doubt was able to get in that game. Indians v Aztecs. I thought it, he had to win early Castle Age, or this would be game over. Not the first time we've seen that from Doubt, Dave, and we have ourselves a series now because uh, Doubt has just shown us that he has some tricks up his sleeve. He has something prepared for future games, I'm sure. Very exciting. It's funny, too. Coming into this tournament, I never thought the topic of dis discussion would be cav archers. <laughs> I never <laughs> predicted that. Like, not in my wildest dream, but Doubt has made it a reality. And, you know, a lot of the complaints people have with cav archers is that you it feels like you can't micro them properly anymore. Doubt's like micro. <laughs> Why do we I don't, need You don't micro? need micro. Like, that's the thing. If you... If you don't need micro for Cav Archers and you can win in the tournament final, maybe Cav Archers are kind of decent. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm loving this personally. Um, <laughs> uh, breaking that meta. Okay, let's go to the, the KD here, Dave, and then uh, we'll break it down. I, I think what would be really fun to look at to sum this game up is actually to look at the timeline after we show the KD. Um, 271 kills for Doubt. And actually, we should show the economy too because he had more of every single resource. Um... But if you look at the timeline, look at the military and how it went up, down, all around throughout Castle Age. Yeah, there were certainly swings there. And you could see the push attempts by Leary, the push attempts by Doubt, but then Doubt stabilized. The raid stopped doing damage in the back of his base, and he slowly started building those Cav Archer numbers, and Leary just couldn't fight back against that. Credit to Leary, though, because Doubt came in with that initial fight with the scouts in Feudal Age after kicking Leary off of his food eco on the fish. And somehow Leary managed to stabilize at the gold, building a defensive tower yeah. just on time. And then got himself into a position where even you were saying like, how do Indians fight Aztecs? How do Indians fight Aztecs? You know, he brought himself back from a losing position and uh, just couldn't quite do enough to stop the flood from Doubt. Is that what I sound like? That, that to me, yes. Yes. Chat, tell me I sound a little bit different than that, please. That. Oh, okay. All right. I. All right. Game three. You guys are really funny. Everyone thinks you're hilarious. Uh, game three. Dow showed us uh, just in game two that a home map with a prepared strategy can do wonders. And I imagine Leary will have something similar in mind. A bit more predictable, Leary, perhaps, because he's got maps like Haboob and declivity where it will be all about aggression um this is how i see leary sieves breaking down dave i think if he goes for acclivity tatars is pretty sick um if he goes for haboob i'm thinking he goes for uh slavs or who actually kind of awkward right because he will also want a scout sieve for atacama which is one of doubt's home maps so maybe he uses Tatars on Haboob and then Slavs on Atacama. He could. I went take, into this. Um, he could take a page out of Doubt's book and use Incas on Haboob. Honestly, wouldn't be bad. I mean, Doubt did it against Yo. I actually went into this scene thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to have it figured out. I know where they're going to use their sieves. And now I'm, now I'm thinking it through a little bit more. Uh, but once Robo tells us what the map will be, I think we can start to guess a bit more. Um, it just doesn't seem like it would really suit Leary's style to go for forward villagers and towers with Incas. Yeah, it doesn't seem like he, it would suit his style, but like Leary can adapt to any style. So I think it would be easier for him than most players to go for a villager rush like that and adapt on the fly. Yeah. And it didn't seem like Doubt style either until he did it. And then it was Doubt style. Um, so maybe that's his plan there. I'm just wondering where uh, he's going to use Incas because he still drafted them and Winged was then. Yeah, it will be Lowlands next. So the people asking, I know it's killing you. Um, it was three around three throughout th 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 around three thousand relic gold for doubt in the previous game. The relics did definitely pay off. Um, but Lowlands, I saw Cummins picked. And again, it doesn't feel Leary esque, but if it was someone like the Max or even Doubt, I could see how you could possibly justify going for Cummins and and risking it with that two TCs. So maybe Leary 
is thinking about that. <sighs> yeah, I mean, feels tough though with the humans, right? You got to have a good map generation to get that second TC. If you have a really good map, you can get the second TC in a defensive location and prevent your opponent from pushing in. Um, yeah. On Empire Wars, there's also an argument for your opponent to just go up to Castle Age as fast as they can and make no military pressure whatsoever. And then once they get Siege on the field, they can start pushing your second TC while you're still stuck in Feudal and there's nothing you can do. It is Kumin's. But to your point, I think Leary could so easily just play Kumin somewhat standard. You don't have to go for the two TCs. I think that's better off in a Dark Age start. Uh, but Kumin's against Berbers. That will have the Berbers. Um, potential for a lot of Knights and Camels from both of these players. And I think the real thing to, that separates the two would be the fact that Kumin's can go for that second TC. Because otherwise... You're playing into knights as Kumins with standard one TC play. Now it's going to have cheap knights and cheap camels. There's no discount for Kumins. I just think I think it's too slow for Kumins, yeah. especially if Doubt re reads the situation um, and uses the market, goes up to Castle Age fast and puts forward pressure down. Kumins are really going to struggle. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of standard gameplay from Leary and picking the Kumins just as sort of a mind game. To make doubt go for some strategy like that and then he arrives at the castle age at a similar time yeah that or you know you just didn't really have a sieve which suited this map as well as you would have wanted it to and you hope to get a win here and then move on to the next map with your stronger sieves uh we'll see but on lowland you're typically pretty far away and up on hills so i expect some more defensive play anyways um should be in the game and i can kind of see the action right now viewers should see it in a moment and Dave, I can tell you, Leary might be considering the second town center. Yeah, he might. And we'll see how that pays off for him. You are on Lowland. You are on the top of a hill. So if you place the TC near that hill, um, suddenly your opponent has to push up that and will do less damage to that area. So maybe that's a strategy choice from Leary. Maybe we're going to see the extra HP walls from the humans going down for an extra line of defense to give him that extra time. Uh, to get to the castle age and yep. i'm interested super interested to see what doubt's opening is here all right well there we are we're in game and we missed about two minutes here but we also missed nothing <laughs> so uh there's the tc for leary and leary is going for that second tc dave as we've been talking about and the scouts are active right now but no one's invested into anything like a stable or an archer range like other games so I highly doubt we will see much in the way of aggression for now. Well, we see Spearman aggression from Doubt, and he had a few more in the queue. He's going to find the berries from Leary. He does have a scout hanging around there. Leary making one Spearman of his own in defense, just in case Doubt sent some scouts forward. Idling the berries, maybe a decent play. I mean, you need food to produce villagers from two TCs, so any food villagers you can idle... Uh, would hurt Leary quite a bit. Okay, so this would be fun to look at. If you look at the the information at the bottom right, that shows the idle TC time, and that would, of course, apply to all the TCs. So in Leary's case, he's got two TCs right now, and sometimes it can be tough to keep those TCs running at all times. So he's done a good job so far. He already has a Vill lead, but you are investing so much more food into vill production that you're probably going to have a later castle age and doubts already I mean, he's being aggressive with spears and a scout right now who knows if this is going to be knights later on is he going to block that villager with the scout if he kills it with three spearmen while blocking with the scout doubts evolved doubt has evolved and never mind that's just that's fine worth he lost it's worth it it's, it's more than yep. worth it now the sad thing is you kill a villager and then he's still three ahead of you, but that's kind of expected at this point. So do what you can. And Doubt's already scouted most of what he needs to see anyways. He knows what Leary's up to. And I think Doubt will be up to a lot of knights in the next age. Yeah, he's already on the way to the castle age. Leary just kind of booming behind. Although look at his resources, Tristan. Impressive stuff from Leary here. Also, look at his gold and berry position. 
He needs to full wall that, man. Like, everything needs to be walled up. If knights arrive, even if Dalt doesn't attack the gold and the berries, he can just run right between the town centers into the back of Leary's eco. It's imperative that Leary gets a full wall down. And if he doesn't, I think Dalt will, will gladly take a couple vil snipes. I doubt we'll have two stables as well. Yeah, and even if Leary wanted to get the full walls down, Tristan, look at how much work the spearmen are doing. Dalt produced, what, four or five spears? They've managed to kill a villager. they managed to wipe out the spearmen from Leary. they managed to delay the villagers on the berry. And most importantly, block any potential walls that Leary wants on this front side. It's honestly perfect. He even got forging, and that will apply to the spearmen and his knights. And otherwise, I think Leary would have walled this. But Leary's on the way up, but Leary's going to need a lot of defensive spearmen, I believe. And he's doing that right now, Dave, as he does look to wall a little bit more. So maybe Leary wants to go boom into Pikeman and then into Knights because he knows what Dalt's going to be up to. Well, there's a stable for Leary. Still producing Spearman. Maybe just as a defense until he can get his Knight production rolling. Doubt is in the Castle Age now and immediately production from two stables. Hmm, and now Leary's going to wall more. I guess if it were you or I, we would have walled before this because we'd be so scared and Leary is able to think in the moment and say, well, I could just wait. You know, he's going to make, he's going to take some time to get the Knights over here. So let's just wait till the last second and look at that, Dave. Now there is a hole around the left side if that wants to go around, but at least this keeps Leary's villagers secure. Actually, uh, the berries, something to look at there. He just over foraged Leary. So uh, that could be an issue if Doubt notices that. Yeah, if he sends those two Knights to the north, and distracts Leary a little bit. He could potentially get in on the berries, but Leary, noticing that right away, he's going to build a palisade wall, and Doubt is going to look for some openings on the right-hand side, but he's not going to find them. And Doubt loops around to the TC. I question that move because he knew the town center was there, so I think I would have gone to the back area of the eco. Now Leary can react to this, and Leary even adding the third town center... And he'll defend with Spearman. Very good play from Leary. Also good play from Doubt, but Doubt finds himself behind by 11 villagers. Yeah, you're always going to be in that position against humans. You just have to reconcile your, yourself to the fact that you're always going to be 10 to 15 villagers behind, regardless of how well you play at this stage of the game. Doubt actually going to the center with a TC, so he's going to try and take that gold control. And you know, Tristan, if he keeps up the pressure, keeps up the production with the Knights, he could potentially hold Leary on this top area and starve Leary of gold. Dave, there are, I don't know about you, but there are moments when I'm casting sets where I'll just get chills because the strategy is so beautiful. The thought process from the players is so perfect. And I just got chills because it, you're spot on. It's just going to develop into a beautiful game as Doubt runs right through. Basically, Leary, he doesn't really have the food eco to make night. Oh my God. What? Is he going to... Oh! <laughs> he <threw the> walls down. <laughs> I mean, just the boldness of that there as he tries to take out these knights and will do so. Sick play, Leary. Uh, but anyways, back to my little point here. He doesn't really have the food eco to push out with knights and camels. So while he does have the villagers, he doesn't necessarily have the villagers in the proper spot. There might not be an easy way for him to take control of the middle. So pretty much what you said. I, I think this will be a fun game. Doubt also on three TCs with the more offensive pressure the best thing about this game is you can see the game plan from both players right like doubt went for those spears intentionally at the beginning to harass leary a little bit knowing that he didn't have the food eco to go for unit production of his own um, yep. and to potentially lay the walls doubt went after that for a relatively quick uptime to get tc's down of his own and try and compete with villager production from leary meanwhile leary at home played it super defensively and then teched into pikemen it, it seems very planned from both of them we'll see which strategy is superior but both game plans playing out i would assume how the players thought they would so far yeah um i'd like to see doubt get a monastery out if he doesn't already but never mind i just checked his base he's got one just to heal up any weak knights get any conversions monks can really make such a big difference and as you can see right there he had just taken an engagement against low numbers of pikemen you can do that with the knights so heal up your weak ones, make those fresh and cheap knights with Berbers, and and take those types of engagements. And Leary's still going to need something more than Pikemen, I feel. Uh, Doubt's certainly thinking about a castle long term because he has 500 stone in the bank. 
Yeah, Leary, only one knight garrisoned in his stable, and he's definitely going to have to make a switch as Delk gets a great conversion there. I thought that monk was huh. dead for sure. Yeah, uh, wasn't paying too much attention to it. That was pretty fast. Now it won't complain about that. And it's 14 military versus 18, Dave. Look how things have evened out. 71 villagers versus 63. I mean, technically, doubt's behind if you if you look at the stats, but I think he's in some ways ahead because of the middle control with the castle and because he has a lot of knights right now. Yeah, and he's going to have camel archers soon to complement the knights, which will be able um, to deal with these pikemen quite effectively. Right, Leary chasing with the pikemen in the middle. Doubt's like, come here, come here. I'll get a conversion, and then the rest of you will die to the castle. <laughs> that was great from Doubt. I love that. And then he'll get the relic, and that's something he did last game. I brought in 3,000 gold just to get those relics in game two. So Leary ran out of his first gold pile. He's now shifting to his next gold pile at the far right side of his base. But after that one, Tristan... He needs to expand to the middle and dealt with a castle there, dealt with knights roaming around as he takes a few hits from the pikeman army from Leary. Could potentially Actually, be able to catch him off guard when he comes out for these resources. Look at look at Leary's Fog of War. He doesn't see the gold that's very close to his base. It's right at the bottom of that hill, but he's not scouted that side, so he's going to be more towards his doubt. Loses so many knights there. Oh, God, but... Anyways, he, if he doesn't see that gold, which he's getting close to... Okay, he spotted it. Anyways, the rest of the gold's kind of out of reach for him, Dave. Yeah, Doubt taking some maybe not favorable Weird. engagements against the uh, the pikemen here, but he has to still feel like he's in a fairly comfortable position. I mean, the villager count now, it's still around 10 to 15 ahead for Leary, but... In terms of map control, Doubt certainly has an advantage. Yeah, I think he would have wanted to save those knights, though. So many knights have healed them all up with monks, and now there's 19 pikemen patrolling around. I mean, this is annoying. Uh, Leary's going to lose most of these to the town center, but he actually kills the knight and runs away. Holy moly. The attention to detail here. Leary's got knights, pikemen, eco to worry about. Uh, he'll have so many town centers, too. Crazy map and crazy game. The macro behind this has been excellent for Doubt, too. You look at the idle time frame, 23 minutes, almost 50 minutes of idle time for Leary, which is something we don't see very often from him. Yep. He had a lot of walling to do, and uh, maybe when you're patrolling that many pikemen forward, it's hard to pay attention to what you want to. Also, Leary got the uh, second attack upgrade, and he probably did that because he's making knights and pikemen, and it applies to both. But his units are not armored then against camel archers, so camel archers will be very strong. But Leary able to find some potential as he gets in because of an overchop to Doubt's base. Uh, the, again, just a very annoying situation to have to deal with. Leary raiding with small numbers of units. Yeah, and Doubt constantly having to send his camel archers back. I'd like to see a few more just straight up camels on the field or monks in his base to deal with these raids so he can focus his camel archer attention on other places such as the golds in the middle that Leary has expanded to. Yeah. Doubt also not mining any stone right now. So you'd think he wants to commit to camel archers as he loses the monk there, is microing his heart out here. He'll be able to back away and get some extra kills possibly, but you want... Did he just buy stone? I think he just bought... 200 stone, so he can get a second castle somewhere. Yeah, where's that second castle going to be? Is it going to be on one of the golds that Mir Leary is currently mining? Or is it going to be more towards the center of the base um, to protect himself from the raids? I doubt loses the monk there. But what he'll want is to kill the knights and get that relic. So he's going to have... He's sending villagers that way. Oh, he's going to go to that stone. Okay, and yeah, he's going to take that relic in. And both players will probably be an imp shortly, Dave. I think this is going to the Imperial Age. And if it does, my question for you is, what should Leary go for? Well, it's tough, right? You definitely can't go for Kipchaks against Camel Archers. That would probably not be a very good idea. Do you continue with the Cavalier upgrade? Do you go for Pikes? It's tough, humans against Berbers. I think 
if you go you go help Cedrium first to push the castles and then hopefully you know doubt spends most of his time dealing with that and your eco is still untouched then you go into cavalier paladin line uh doubt does not have many castles they're right in the middle of the map if he was prepping siege workshops to go ram held uh berbers really struggle against that and then you can switch into something else but that's just my line of thinking and of course i i really don't know it seems like leary is at least making enough knights now where he's thinking cavalier God, if you look at Doubt's Fog of War, Tristan, he sees everything in the middle except where Leary's TCs are. Especially the one on the left is a joke. Wow. <laughs> An absolute joke, dude. What? <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> I I mean, it's not like he can really pressure it right now, but that is very unfortunate. He's patrolling these camel archers around, Dave, and he'll be in the Imperial Age first. Still unsure what Leary wants to commit to. He's been trying these night raids, but now Doubt's catching him out, and Doubt's getting some crazy kills. These night raids are not going to work much longer. No, it's kind of a delaying tactic from Leary to divide Doubt's attention, but Doubt slowly but surely building up his camel archer mass, and I see he's getting Kazba right now in his castle, which, uh, is that the one where the camels regenerate HP? I believe it is. No, I think that's uh, castles work faster. The other one, castles Magrabi work camels. The other one. Yeah, yeah, you're you're on par though, because Magrabi camels is the second unique deck, and that means the camels regenerate. So, yeah, I mean, doubt doubt never loses units with his micro, right? So he'll never need that one, Kappa. And uh, the camel arch is doing work right here. He's doing a great job to hit and run, hit and run, and cavalier the first thing that Lear will do in the Imperial Age. Yeah, and that castle on the right side, Doubt did have outposts over there earlier, but Leary had killed them, and now he's placing one there. And here comes more raids from Leary. The Night Flood is just non-stop into this side of Doubt's eco. Doubt with nothing here in defense currently. And we kind of saw it in game two. There's a real issue when you go for a for any cav archer unit where you need to have everything in one spot. And, and if you can get enough of them, you can force the fights and win games because it's uncounterable. But if you start to get raided like this, then you're in trouble. And Leary was doing it all throughout Castle Age, Dave, and he's just nonstop raiding Doubt. And well, both players have idols. Doubt has 94 villagers and Leary at 124. Okay. And in the middle, even, there's knights. I mean, he the guy's everywhere. Yeah, the guy's everywhere, but Doubt just got a, a good series of raids in on Leary, too. He has camels, camel archers running around his base. He's going to discover that TC over there on the gold. And if he decides to, like, run in here, there's not much that Leary has to stop him if he goes into Leary's main yeah. base. Yeah, and Doubt, um, he's going to be aware that the raids can happen again and probably fortify his base. So is the ball worth it? It, it always depends. It, it, there's so many factors. Don't like how Doubt was sitting in the town center's range there. But Doubt's Camel Archer, seven, or sorry, eight base attack. He has a lead Camel Archer. He's killing everything he faces with these units. Yeah, and he's got enough production to sustain it too. Just wiped up a ton of villagers at Leary's base as he's trying to clear up the Cavaliers at his own. If he runs in there, Tristan, there's a huge potential for damage. Or honestly, Dave, just camp the gold. Leary does not have a ton of gold income. He has 10 Cavalier on the map right now. It's not enough, man. It's not enough. It's too gold heavy. Uh, we do have an interesting area on the right side. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Big fight here. <laughs> See all these Camel Archers do against the Cav. But yeah, Leary also trying to treb in the middle at this moment. So things to look at. I think the Camel Archers will... I think most go down. Eight. There. Yeah, they traded really nicely there. I thought the Cavalier would do much better than they did, but Camel Archers, pretty strong unit once they're fully upgraded. And Doubt does have the attack fully upgraded on them. I love Can he clear up this trap? Players? Um, sorry, Dave, what you said something about traps? I said, can he clear it up? It seems like a pretty rough position to push on the right with only Camel Archers. It's going to need some sort of melee unit to help him out. Lots of resources for Doubt. I'm wondering if he can consider getting Heavy Camel. Because he's got plenty of food and plenty of gold. Leary takes that fight there. That's the gold that Leary really needs. Um, but to your point, I think the one thing that is troubling Doubt is that Leary has a treb right there. And it could be more. So he loses castles. He cannot produce these Camel Archers. 
Bal patrols into that gold too, uh, but there's two castles hitting him. I think it's worth it to take out the trebuchet here though. Maybe, I mean, he's gonna lose numbers again. Oh God, and Leary at any point can ungarrison repair. Yep, oh, there it is. God. Dude, that was so impressive from Leary. Impressive thinking to just allow Doubt to sit there and make Doubt think that he could get away with that. And now you have the Cavalier raid, and this is as I think Leary's saving up for Paladin, and the Paladin tech is on the way. So Leary is back in this game. Doubt has 30 Camel Archers, but there's 17 Cavalier that will soon be upgraded. What a hold from Leary. It really looked rough a couple minutes ago. Yeah, and we've seen this so often in this tournament, Tristan, where Leary gets in a position where maybe he's behind, and what does he do? He doesn't take the main engagement against the army. Yeah. He avoids fighting that main army. He goes straight to your eco, and if you have any holes at all, he's going to punish you very, very hard. Yeah, and it's, it's the recognition of there being a massive difference between the melee and the ranged units. You can split up the melee units, and, and here comes just a few cavalier. Now, Camel Archers couldn't do this, and Dowd loses his treb, which means he might lose that castle. This is all before Paladin comes in. Doubt really needs some type of a swing. Yeah, well, Doubt is whittling down the numbers of Cavalier, and he has teched into Light Cav of his own. He's putting a castle on that gold, so if Leary has no access to gold, doesn't matter if he has the Paladin tech, he won't be able to produce them. And I, I saw Light Cav doing damage in Leary's eco, too, so Doubt has stables that have their gather points set to Leary's farms. You can see the light cab making their way in there. That's going to be a distraction and it's going to disrupt the food eco as well from there. Dave, as of mm, 10 seconds in the future, <laughs> the only gold that Leary will be mining comfortably, if you can call it comfortably, is next to the treb that's firing on Doubt's castle. That is it. And that treb this time, as you see some massive raids from Leary there, that treb's going to go down. So oh. Doubt will hold that castle. Uh, uh. Hey, there we go. Second time is the charm. Doubt takes it out. He's got a castle over on the left-hand side, that one TC from Leary on the gold, and he's raiding the main economy from Leary. And like I said before, Paladin's a great tech, but if you have no gold income, how are you gonna get more on the field? Paladin into GG, dude. I mean, he just hasn't been able to make any. What in the... Maybe he could have gone for Halberdiers. Maybe he, he could have started off with something other than Cavalier, but... I mean, Leary, wow. he's forced to tap out just 60 seconds after he completed the Paladin technology. Unbelievable gold control from Doubt in this game. Yeah, and the raids were, were so crazy from Leary too. Constantly on the farms from Doubt, constantly on the wood from Doubt, but Doubt with the experience to put that castle down in the middle early, put that TC down in the middle early, get that gold control, get a position that Leary couldn't raid and slowly build up his camel archer numbers. Is there something, like does Doubt get a hidden bonus for using cav archer units? Is it like, it seems so impressive how he's able to make them work consistently. He, I think he commits. That's the thing. That's the difference. People, people struggle with the balance in getting to them. Like ACCM made uh, Camel Archers against Doubt in the semifinal, but he sacrificed Eco for it. And Doubt is able to find this fine balance. And I think the real difference in this game was that Kumins they want to get to the second town center, and then Lee even went for the third. But where was he building the town centers, Dave? At the top. So. Doubt took control, Doubt held control, and Leary eventually was starved out of gold. Doubt having almost 3,000 more gold collected in that game, and also with three relics versus two. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe Leary was thinking Doubt was going to pick another Civ for this map. Because Cumans, they just don't, it doesn't seem like they match up well against Berbers in this situation. I, so there's the KD, and, and we can show the economy too. I wish that we could replay this game from mid-castle age and Leary would go Halberdier Siege Ram. Hmm. Open up with Halberdier Siege Ram and maybe he didn't have the eco for it, right? But with only Camel Archers, the Camel Archers can't do anything against the Siege Rams. Halb Siege Ram would probably guarantee to take out a castle or two and then Leary could follow that up with Hussar or Cavalier. Like he don't... Instead what he did was he went only Paladin which only works for so long and I... You know, I think he might be regretting not going for any trash units there, but it is tough. Um, you know, we'll go to that timeline and, and Doubt's just constant presence 
when it comes to military in the Imperial Age. So many range units out. I think the unique tech that he researched with Berbers helped to keep the production of the castles flowing faster. And Leary was the heavy favorite, I'd say, for a lot of people going in. Gout says, you guys have got to stop underestimating, <laughs> underestimating me. I'm up 2-1. It's 2021. Who freaking cares? I'm loving this, man. Um, what do you think Leary's mentality is like right now? Down 2-1 to Dow. Uh If I know Leary, it's like, all right, let's go next game. I'll beat you next game. Leary, I don't think, is one to fall behind and then feel a ton of pressure um, to come up with bold strategies or really execute. I think he believes in his his playing ability. And, you know, Doubt, I don't think, is one to feel pressure either. He's been here mm -hmm. so many times. I think he's going into this final fairly confident in his abilities, especially in his past results, um, beating out Mr. Yo and beating out ACCM. So both of these players most likely operating from a pretty stable mental attitude right now, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I, I interviewed Leary after the comeback against Hera in the quarters. And for those that missed it, it was a best of five quarter final. Hera won the first two games and Leary reverse swept to come back to win 3-2. And Leary said, I, I wasn't really satisfied with how I played the first two games. There were adjustments I needed to make. And so I just focused on making those adjustments. So, you know, there's certainly things have not gone as planned so far in two of these games at least, and he's going to have to make adjustments, kind of like Doubt did, right? Doubt lost game one, and he got stomped in game one. And then game two and game three have been very different. Uh, the map will be Haboob, and that was this Leary's be... first home map pick. So, uh, Dave, this is, this is the map where Leary needs to get that win. Tristan, this game is going to be nuts. <laughs> I just saw the Civ selections. Oh my so god! We're going for. I'm I'm so excited. We're going for Haboob, which is Leary's home map pick. Earlier on, we saw Doubt pick Incas against Mister Yo, and he got a pretty convincing victory. We are now seeing Leary pick Incas, and Doubt is going to go for the Bulgarians, a sieve that he really loves, and a sieve that he's been quite successful with so far in this tournament, and has a really high win rate so far in this tournament especially against incas especially against incas bulgarians is a good counter to incas if you want to go forward with villagers with incas the sieves that will give you problems are the sieves that can get man at arms out and cheap blacksmith upgrades which is only one and that's bulgarians i think that bulgarians is a straight up a counter pick because incas can still win but i think it's the better sieve and it had to have been expected here too which is so weird now I, I mentioned earlier that doubt has said that some of the am guys are the copycat kids doubt was the one who went incas on habu before did he expect that leary would would copy that strategy and then counter it he's countering his own strat basically i mean bulgarians is you pick them on wings for a reason right you are winged for a reason because they're such a good civilization when you're really close to your opponent um, you can apply that pressure early and you can make the tech switches really easily. And here we go. Leary is down <laughs> two to one against doubt, Tristan. Something I never thought I'd say going into these finals. And we're going into game number four. Leary's playing as the Incas and doubt is playing as the Bulgarians. Leary opening with an archer range. All right. Yeah, he's going to need those archers. He will need his quick walls to work wonders for him. Leary has already lost his eagle to doubt. So the good thing for Leary is the second he sees Bulgarians, he's going to know what's coming. And he has the walls up already. Now, doubt behind this. He has an archer range foundation next to his blacksmith, but no one's building it, which makes me think that he misclicked with his, his command queue or shift queue. And it's just been sitting there. So that is, I mean, it's been, okay, now he's realized. But normally that range would already be up. So that's really going to hurt yeah. his follow-up now, Dave, as Leary has to protect his wood line. Yeah, and it's super important um, to get those units out onto the field quickly. We've seen how Leary can scale if he uh, if he takes a good engagement early. I love the fact that Leary is kind of playing Inca's standard on this map. Maybe yeah. he thinks they're just a, a decent sieve for being so close to your opponent. You know, if you, once you get the armor upgrades, it affects your villagers as well. So less potential for doubt to raid. Plus, you get the extra um, 
um, space from the houses, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, he's at 65 population starting out. So nice little bonus there. Yeah, um, it's also just a great way to adapt on the fly. Like, Doubt's going to get armor for infantry right now? Are you kidding me? Is this a... I mean, I guess it's only 50 food, but I wasn't expecting to see that. But just to continue along on my point, I I could see Leary going into this thinking that he was going to play Incas in an aggressive manner going forward. But the second he saw Bulgarians, he realized, uh oh, that's not good. Let's just, you know, switch our game plan a bit. Something that other players have not done in this tournament when getting surprised by the opponent's civilization. Yeah, Leary, two archers versus three men at arms with armor. I think Leary wins that fight <laughs> without losing an archer every day of the week. His micro is on point, but Vipe, or sorry, not Viper, Doubt. Wow. I know <laughs> Doubt's playing. You know, Doubt's playing out of his mind when I start calling him Viper. Is pressuring the berries, and Leary says, okay, I've got military here. They're no longer gatherers, they're warriors, and he's coming forward. Yeah, it's interesting, and Doubt already has more men at arms here. D David's just so used to having Viper in finals, it was just instinct there, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, man, well, man, uh, Doubt really looking good here, and I can't tell you when I've seen someone make more than the Look on his berries. Three or four Look at his berries. Start. Counter raid from Leary as Doubt might pick a villager. No, he's not going to quite get that, and he actually ended up killing two villagers at the berries from doubt so doubt's got to be careful here and he's got to save these vills as fast as he can loses another one but the reason he's losing more is because look at leary's base right now so at the exact same time both players were engaging leary lost uh two villagers so far in this game and he's trying to to push these skirmishers back uh, with the eagles he's actually done a pretty decent job but it still has not been the easiest going over here at leary's base on the berries too yeah, Leary also lost a villager on his gold to a couple men at arms from Doubt. So Doubt continued to produce those and sent some forward. And Leary's coming forward with villagers again, but Doubt should be able to get a villager there, losing the final man at arm to the TC. He might get two villagers here, Tristan. I no, think Leary yeah, I could just get away. A bit unfortunate there, but he also, Doubt had a fortunate moment where he had a, a six HP man at arm and it killed two weak eagles in his fi final two hits, which was sick. I see a stable for Doubt, so he's thinking of Scouts, Dave, but still not hesitating to make a few more men-at-arms. And Leary is adding a market and is continuing with the Eagle production. So he wants to scale into Eagles in the Castle Age. Doubt's going to loop around here. More men-at-arm production, which is really, really nice to see from Doubt. He knows that Leary is going to continue to produce Eagles, so he wants those as a buffer in between his skirms and the Eagle Warriors. This, is, this, is, this comes down to so much micro. Your skirmishers have to be used against the enemy skirmishers and archers. Man at arms have to be used against the eagles. And uh, I mean, it didn't seem like the cleanest of micro moments there for Dal. I think he's trying to take out the archers because he's confident in his scout follow up, but he only has one scout at home. And he, yeah, Leary is out microing him right now. Pushing him back. Doubt is ahead by two villagers. Um, and he does have the farm upgrade, whereas Leary does not. I noticed that. It's not the first time I've seen that from Doubt, and I think he's trying to hide the fact that he has the scouts right now, Dave. I just don't know if he's going to have enough. Kind of needs to fight right here. Is he going to eject the scouts? Is he going to patrol them forward? Here he comes. Still using his skirms against the archers. There's only four in there. And the scouts do have forging and armors just about to complete. This could be a great moment to fight if you're Doubt. This is a big swing for Doubt. The key for Leary is keeping his archer numbers alive so he can have some sort of counter for the men at arms. But he's forced to pull them back. They're all weak. And Doubt's men at arms clean up the eagles. They're going to continue to get some good hits. And there's the scout follow up that Leary needs to be worried about. Look at how low HP those archers are. Yeah, archer's very weak. Scout numbers. If, if Doubt gets to six or seven scouts, uh, he could wreck so many different areas of Leary's eco. The golds are exposed, the farms are exposed, berries are exposed, and Doubt's got two stables. But Leary is, I think, looking at this differently, Dave. He wants to get to Castle Age. He's just used the market, and he's clicked up. Sold all the stone. He said, forget about feudal. I'm going to defend until Castle Age. Yeah, and I, I don't know what Doubt's response should be. Should he be going... 
full futile here to try and punish Leary for that, or should he be going to Castle Age himself? It's, it's difficult to know in these situations. I don't think he's in the position to go up. He's kind of in the middle there, and amazing quick balls, by the way, from Leary. So I think you've, you've got to go all in scouts. But also, if Eagles are the threat, I think you need to make men at arms as well. So it's, it's interesting. Leary has done the wise thing to continue to make archers, because I think he knows the worry of going only eagle against man at arms don't watch out for the spears uh takes a few extra hits from the spearman not too too many though pulls the scouts away in time and he's got to loop around and see if there's any other areas of the base he can he can take villagers because he can't take this army in a straight up fight but there's the man at arm that's what you were talking about he needs to start adding them in yeah if, if leary didn't have archers i think that'd be great but leary could actually afford to get uh, crossbow with Bodkin and make these equals. Doubt needs to engage versus force now. Hey, 40 seconds, Leary's going to be in the castle age. Dal takes the fight. Dal clears out the eagles in front. And Leary, while he still has the archer mass, has lost most of his eagles there. Yeah, but the scouts for Doubt are very weak. So it's whether he can clear up these archers. He's going to try and use his skirmishers, pressuring with a men at arm. Takes out an extra archer, takes out another archer. So he's dwindling the numbers, Tristan. Is it enough? Uh, it, it's going to be fun to watch this now. Leary makes it to Castlate with 10 military. Doubt and Feudal with 10 military. But I think to answer your question, I, I just don't see it being enough. Leary was able to hold on against some immense amount of pressure. And yes, the blacksmith upgrades are cheap. But it's you're still spending resources. And scouts also cost a lot of food. So Doubt has to go for the classic all-in style and Feudal. And it will be crossbow with Bodkin with some eagles in front for Leary. I love the fact that as soon as he saw Leary hit Castle H, he immediately added that third stable. That's such a veteran yeah. move right there from Doubt. He looked at his resources. He's thinking, there's no way I'm going to get up in cast to Castle H in a competitive time. So I need to just keep adding my upgraded feudal scouts and hope to take good engagements against the crossbows, which he could get here. He could clean up this entire army. A lot of those crossbows are weak. The skirmishers are there next to the wood line. Those crossbowmen will go down. And Leary invested into crossbow and also Bodkin. He did not go for Eagle Warrior. So Doubt kind of has a chance. Dave, now I'd like to see Doubt make more men at arms. Just get a few in there and use the scouts to focus down crossbows if you can see them. I also think if Doubt could send three or four villagers to stone, that he should start building defensive towers all over his base. Because this is going to be... If he has any chance, a very long extended feudal age situation. Yeah, and Leary's getting that second armor upgrade, so that's going to do a couple things. It's going to make the eagles harder to kill, and it's also going to make the villagers harder to kill if Doubt wants to go for some distraction raids. And Leary has cleaned up the scouts at the front there, Tristan. He's pushing into the eco. Excellent pressure from Leary. Let's see if Doubt can defend. Yeah, I just don't know, Dave. Now he's adding the barracks. I think that was such a poor fight for Doubt to take. He didn't need to take the fight. Maybe he was worried about his gold getting hit if he didn't. Uh, I think it would have been better for him to try and use his scouts against the crossbows and then wait for a few men at arms because these eagles are going to be no joke. And they will be eagle warrior now. It gets even worse for Doubt. And Leary should just continue doing more of the same, Dave. There's no reason to boom. Just, just all in eagles, all in pressure. Try and maybe split up a little bit. Get a few eagles in the wood lines and farm areas. Yeah, and if you're in Leary's position, you stay on one TC. You don't add that other TC until you have excess res in the bank. As Leary loops around to the goal, great recognition from him. Splitting up the sides and Doubt's going to be forced to run. So many other players would have had two houses there. That's such a Doubt thing. Like, that area should have been walled to the wood line. So I'm rather surprised by that one, uh, Doubt. It says he's at 56 villagers, which is true, but he's bound to lose more. And remember, if he ever clicks up to Castle Age, his TC will be idle and not creating villagers while he's aging up. So, Leary with a massive lead. Yeah, he's killed quite a few villagers over here on the left-hand side. Doubt, though, making more men-at-arms. He's going to defend with those. They do still trade quite well against the Eagle Warriors, uh, even though Eagle Warriors are a Castle Age unit. Unfortunately for Doubt, he's not going to find anything with his couple scouts that he sent north, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the grand finals. You play it out until you're, you're damn sure this game is over. No problem with that. Um, 
but I think we can see pretty clearly that this is going to be a 2-2 best of seven finals. Uh, glorious finals, and Leary is bring, has brought it back with his favorite map. Davey went for Incas. We both freaked out. We thought it'd be messy, and it was. But Leary's defense, while, while having the ability to counterattack, was very impressive. He played him standard, and he showed how strong Incas can be when you're right next to your opponent on an open map. I think the key to that game for Leary there was the fact that in in Feudal Age, he saved those four or five archers that he had. He kept them on like, you know, five HP, seven HP, one was on. And that enabled him to fight back the men-at-arms. It enabled him to fight back um, the scouts from doubt. The fact that he kept those alive and then get to the Castle Age at a reasonable time and get his eagles onto the field. Super impressive stuff from Leary. Good attempt from Doubt, but we are tied 2-2 now going to game number five. And to the statistics we go, military stats, 97 kills for Leary, 75 units lost. And that's that's pretty significant considering uh, how that game played out. And then a Doubt having more food and wood, but just didn't have the gold. This is typical, man. You can just throw all your villagers on gold with Incas, Aztecs, and Mayans. And Eagles and 1v1s, so tough to deal with. That combined with the fact that in super messy games, you can just throw extra villagers to gold and buy and sell res and use market eco, which Doubt is even known for himself. Um, but yeah, we'll back out of this one and we'll speculate now because Doubt's, uh, Doubt's game to win will be talked about a lot. Um, he won with Indian Cav Archers against Aztecs. And that was a, a map where I don't think Leary had a lot of experience. Remember, he didn't go for the box turtles or the shorefish. He he had a good sieve, but maybe Leary was unexperienced there. So now it's got Cattails and Atacama. These are maps that I would consider strong suits for Leary. Uh, I've seen him play on both of them, but Dal picked Cattails first. So perhaps picking Cattails first tells us that he has a good strategy in mind and Dave just had a thought what if you pick koreans what if you go turtle ships in the middle on cattails it is a thing i don't know if it's a good thing but it is a thing yeah maybe the i don't know maybe the koreans pick was a bit of a troll from doubt who knows i'm sure we'll find out uh by the end of this set the map is actually going to be atacama which is one of the most exciting maps i've ever i think of, of all time in terms of game quality, I've seen so many great games on this map. And you mentioned it before we started with the finals here, Tristan. The maps in Red Bull Wallalo, like one, two, and three, have been some of the consistently like best generation of maps we've ever seen throughout all of our tournaments in terms of producing high quality games, high quality aggressive games. I think you just don't you just don't have time to focus on the little things you do in a dark age start. In Dark Age Start, we can we can nitpick over how many tiles of, of uh, potential wall spots there are in between golds and woodlines and whatnot. And in Empire Wars, you start with twenty six villagers, and you you pretty much accept, yeah, things are going to be brutal, right? Uh, but I'm with you. And the one thing about Atacama that's really exciting from a map scripting standpoint is that this Atacama implemented one change, which is some water into the into the corners, and it's actually been used. It's actually been important. And when I first saw the map, I didn't think it would be. And a lot of other players felt the same and then started to change their style after seeing certain other players uh, do well with that. So um, I'm personally a big fan of making little tweaks, but keeping the good stuff about maps the same from tournament to tournament. Yeah, one of those players that really used the pawns was Kapach. If you watch him on this version of Atacama, like he has three pawn control. 10 minutes into the game <laughs> like he puts yep. a huge amount of importance on that and i think other players maybe have watched that and have thought to themselves "Ooh, there's potential for me to get my fish eco rolling while i'm defending from the aggression on the land so going into game number five very shortly here doubt will be playing as the franks and leary will be playing as the slavs and we'll be into that game. By the way, Dave, on your side, and I think they're fixing it in the back end, but if you got backed away from the mic, maybe get a bit closer, just a little lower than what I'm used to hearing. Um, 
but game game number five in a best of seven who would have thought two two here and leary is uh gonna be very happy to see doubts gold spot <laughs> doubts gold wide open on the front that's gonna be tough to lock down expect a messy game again dave yeah it's always gonna be a messy game at atacama though is that better for you yeah, yeah, I think, again, I, I let them know as well, so they can always do it, but just as a quick FYI, it is better. Um, do you think that since both of them have farm bonuses that they will even dock? I think it's worth it, and I see a red dot in the south corner, so Doubt is thinking about it. He's very good on these these hybrid sort of map control-esque maps, and Atacama has become one with the addition of the pawns. So he's already got a fishing ship out on the field, and he's defending at his main base with a spearman. Yeah. He's got that dock up. He defends nicely there. He did lose a scout, but dealt on the prowl possibly to run forward. I think we'll, we'll expect to see a lot of spearmen, a lot of scouts, and... This is not a map that you can play perfectly. So I think having the fishing ships is nice because this is not really a map where you see players contest each other's pawns. So you lose a few villagers, but then you have five to six fishing ships on a pond. It, it helps you recover from those awkward positions. Yeah, and Doubt, sending villagers forward already to the wood line, I believe. He was quite far away from that. And Leary could be in a position to punish that with the archers, but he's just going to pass. It's going to roll right to the back of Doubt's base where there's nothing. Yeah, Doubt just sniped a villager at Leary's base, but he lost a scout. And that's always... You have to weigh the pros and cons on that. I think Leary's trying to hit the wood line, but Doubt just abandoned this for the middle wood. Leary's going to be pissed when he watches this wreck later. But maybe not so much if he can make it back here, because the archers will be a surprise to Doubt. And Doubt has to run with everything. He's off of berries, his franks, and the other villagers that were on wood are now going to the middle. Yeah... I mean, Leary had his scouts back there, so he knew that if nothing else, Doubt had berries. And Doubt knows that there's villagers over here in Leary's base trying to get some picks. Leary's lumber camp, maybe not the most efficient thing I've ever seen. Uh, traveling about 10 tiles to get to the wood. But Doubt traveling with all of his villagers, and he's going to opt for a defensive tower, which is probably the right play in this situation. I don't like that tower. It feels very i mean okay you've got two lumber camps and all but a tower behind that wood line now denies two lumber camps i feel like the tower could have been closer a doubt struggling with military numbers it's 17 military versus eight leary is just all over doubt and dave there's a real problem with food right if you've got uh however many villagers he's got on wood right now 25 on wood there the normal response is to pull villagers to make farms but you can't walk to your tc to place farms now I think Doubt's eco has taken a big hit. Well, that's why you have six fishing ships. That's true. So it's it's kind of deceiving if you're in Doubt's position, right? But Leary adding fish of his own on the left corner. So he's going to have some extra feed, food eco too. And the fishing ships are what has enabled Doubt to get the armor upgrade on his scouts and to make his scouts. And he's going to take an engagement against Leary while the spearmen are out of position. Yeah, one of Leary's scouts does not want to fight, but Leary had the same number of scouts with the same number of upgrades. There's the tower. The amount of HP is Franks, and there's the tower. And again, this is, it, it just, it was all that, that two archer, two spearman play from Leary with the three scouts in the back of Doubt's base that forced this. And Doubt, look where he's adding his farms now, right next to the range, has to rebuild a mill. Leary is loving life right now. Yeah, and Leary making a house around that tower will probably wall up the other side too. Something we saw Doubt punished for in his game against Mr. Yo yesterday, not walling in his towers as Leary comes in and picks off a few villagers on the farms. And then as soon, as soon as Doubt comes back, he retreats. Yeah, and now at this point, Leary will have bloodlines. So his scouts have 65 HP. The maximum amount of HP you can get with Franks is 54 in this position. So in Feudal Age, Scout All-Ins, you'd prefer to have Slavs, but Doubt with a good cleanup there. And he's still in this economically, Dave, and it's now 8 military for Doubt and 10 military for Lyrae. I almost can't believe that. It looked really messy for Doubt there. Yeah, he managed to save as many as he could, and he actually sent a villager over to the right side to take that pond as well. So he's going to have more fishing eco added to his existing fishing ships. 
which will be nice for him. He's also looping around. Yeah, great quick walls from Leary there to deny that. He knows that area is exposed, and he's going to keep Spearman patrolling to defend. Yep, even adding his third stable now, and Dal uh, giving some free hits to Leary. Now Leary giving some free hits to Dal. Of course, there's so much going on. This is never going to be perfect, and Dal says, oh, nope, my micro is perfect and runs away at the proper time. I think this becomes all about scouts. Spearman defensively, sure, but archers, I feel, are very unimportant. Uh, Leary might disagree, but Dalt's got to get some momentum back, Dave, and he might do so if he can keep Leary on the run at home. Archers only become important when you get like 10 plus of them. <laughs> when you have a ball that can't be stopped by your enemy. Scouts are so great on this map for the mobility because it's so hard to wall. You can see Doubt trying to capitalize on that, sending two scouts to the right of Leary's base, two scouts to the left of Leary's base. And Leary capitalizing on it as well, taking villager kills where he can and then running away from the Doubt defense. Oh boy, on the farms, Doubt, he's got a skirm there. Just a skirmisher. Oh, that's brutal. And it, it's wacky, too, because Doubt's still got some action moving around the map. And I'm loving the fishing ships for Doubt. He's got seven in the south. He's got two more over to the right side. And he's even maybe considering going up to the north to dock. As we see armor for Leary, he's going to get armor for his spearmen. And he's really focusing on Doubt's wood lines. Yeah, Doubt manages to actually kill two villagers with his scouts there, which is great. But he's pushed back. <laughs> Leary has pushed back all of his villagers off wood, and now he's forced to go for those little nuggets of wood in the back, which is not what you want to do. And you definitely don't want that many scouts attacking your gold when you have nothing in defense. 26 military versus 10. Doubt's eco is a mess. He's off of gold. He, he has four lumber camps that he's placed in the middle. None of them he can use. And he just placed a lumber camp on eight trees that he'll chop through in about 30 seconds. He is on the way to Castle Age. But the difference is that Leary is going all in feudal, spending that 800 feud in attack. And I think Doubt just got called out big time here. <laughs> oh man, what a risk <laughs> to try and go up the castle age. We have a word for this in Canada, Tristan. <laughs> shambles. <Sorry? laughs> complete, complete <laughs> shambles his economy is in right now. It's a disaster. Look at the army count for Leary and where's the defense for Doubt? It's just not there. Yeah. It's, it's the beauty of these all-in maps, these open maps. I feel as though Doubt can probably get a few knights on the field if he can somehow get wood to afford a market, <laughs> which he doesn't have. Uh, but Leary could just kill everything with scouts and spearmen, man. He doesn't even need to go Castle Age right now. Because more villagers will go down. Everything's going. There's nothing you can do against this. You'd need... How many knights do you need to clear up this army? Like, six? Seven, Probably eight. sick, but even then, it never that doesn't stop you from dealing with the, the raids after the fact, right? And the raids are only going to continue here. I, I can't help but feel like Doubt, you know, he could have he could have kept this competitive if he would have continued to stay in feudal. And Leary, after doing that damage, he's 20 bills ahead. He will click up to the castle age, and he's still killing more in Doubt's eco. Yeah, every time I look in Doubt's Eco, I'm surprised that he still has villagers left over. <laughs> like, how is he, how is he keeping them safe? There's an unstoppable <laughs> horde. I, I'm going to count how many lumber camps Doubt has had to build in this game because he's had so many. Oh my God, he's had like 10 lumber camps. I actually can't wait to look at the timeline in this game. Because Doubt's going to give it his best shot here with some knights. Because you'll see Doubt hit Castle Age and then whoosh, he disappears from the timeline. Oh boy. And Leary actually, he's trying to raid and he has Doubt fully surrounded, but Doubt has so little in terms of eco that Leary just can't find anything to kill. Yeah, it's getting to that point where you're a victim of your own success, right? You've raided so well that there's nothing left to raid, but your opponent refuses to resign as Doubt goes everything to gold, trying to all in here, but all in with what? A few knights? I mean doesn't seem like it's going to be effective no and the spearman if the spearman were enough there then he could send his knights offensively and, and try and hit leary and that would be his only way back look at leary's micro there leary 30 seconds from castle 59 eco down at 32 33 military versus four and scouts are killing knights 
This is one of those broken record games where the player refuses to resign Tristan and we just end up saying the same thing over and over yeah. and over again. But there it is, the resignation from Doubt. Leary with just insane numbers of production. And he's, he's yeah. able to win fights early and just carry that momentum so well and snowball. That's maybe his best skill in Empire Wars is snowballing his way to a victory. I love the play from him to immediately come forward with that tower as soon as he noticed the wood line from Doubt to wall in the tower so there's no way Doubt can get back to that position and then mass up his army and force the fight at an area where Doubt needs to stay. That center wood line. Yeah. Like, Doubt can't run from that. That's his whole economy. And Leary knows that. He masses up enough army and then forces the engagement there. Okay, so there's something I really want to talk about here. And I, I want to make sure that people pick up on this because it's it's really what changed the game. And it is probably what Leary is best at and has won so many important games in this tournament with. Dave, do you remember? I, I don't even think it was in this event. We were casting something. Maybe it was in the qualifier and it was on Haboob and it was a Magyar war. And we taught, we, you said, I prefer scout opening for this reason. I'm like, yeah, that's really good for this reason, that reason. And then I also talked about the archer opening in a scout war. And in that particular game, there was archers and spears that hit the berries in the wood line. And right here, Leary changed the game, adding a range in what is normally a scout war. When he got to the back area of Doubt's base, Doubt abandoned his berries and his wood line, and that's when he made all those awkward decisions, running to that wood line, placing the tower, which we didn't like, and all of those moments stemmed from the sneaky little archer play. And it's so crazy because he only had four units. It was just two archers with fletching and two spearmen, and it changes the course of the game. So that is really what did it for me. And then Leary just doubled down. Uh, we'll go to the statistics, but look for more of that if we see maps like this. Well, to be fair, he also had three scouts there, and he, he knew the berries yeah. were there. So he looped the archers and spears all the way around. The risk with archer and spear is they get killed as they're going to the enemy base, right? If you can manage to sneak them around, then you're fine. It's just, it's a risk at the beginning, but wow, look at the discrepancy there. <laughs> Units killed, largest army, everything for Leary. Okay, now look at the timeline. <laughs> it's like, you can tell right when Doubt clicked Imp, everything started to die. Or not Imp, sorry, Castle Age. He definitely didn't make it to Imp. Like, that's the issue. You, you If you have walls up, and you can maybe try and be greedy towards knights, but otherwise scouts are just going to destroy you. And, and Doubt had very little left at the end there, uh, which means that Leary is one win away from his back-to-back -back championships in Red Bull Lolo 3, Dave. Um, Doubt has gave us, as uh, both players have given us such an amazing finals. I don't want it to end. I, I'll say it. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Sorry, Red Bull, but I'd like Doubt to win this one so we can take it to Game 7 trying to adjust my microphone volume on the fly with no input whatsoever <laughs> it's always a recipe for success i'm sorry guys if i'm a little bit too low or too loud hopefully our production team can handle that in the background yeah leary up three two here doubt needs a game and you said if doubt was going to win this series it was going to happen in seven games that's the way it needs to happen at the moment Tristan as we go into Doubt's final home map which is Cattails and he has Koreans left he has oh, God. Huns left and he has Mayans left so I'm suspecting we're seeing Huns or Koreans it's gonna be pretty hype either way well what Civ would Doubt want for Acclivity because Leary's definitely going for he's definitely going Saracens on Cattails and he'll save either Vietnamese or Tatars for Acclivity so Let's do it that way. I think Doubt might want Huns for Clivity, personally. And then... Koreans? I mean... Is he, is he really going to try and go Koreans oh. on Cat Hill? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, ah, I'm me, so tell excited. Me. Tell me. Tell the people. Well, I'd only get really excited about one civilization pick here for Doubt, and it is indeed Koreans. He's going to be matching up against the Saracens from Leary. I'm super excited to see what Doubt can bring here. And they've already started the game, people. We will be in in just a second. If Leary wins, he will be Red Bull Wololo 3 champion.
just like two. And if doubt wins, we take it to game seven. Now, Koreans have some crazy bonuses that are kind of forgotten here. You, you do have a discount on your Navy. All uh, wood military, which extends towards your Navy, is discounted. Saracens have the faster firing galleys, Dave. And they also have that market, which we talk about all the time. And the players are actually well within reach of each other on that left side if they want to go and land. Yeah, Doubt's already discovering that, which will help him uh, to send the galleys right to Leary's docks. Leary also discovering Doubt, though, with his scout. So they're going to know they're super close to each other. You're mentioning those Korean bonuses, and, and with those changes, um, balance changes across the past year, they become less and less of a one-trick pony. So Doubt can compete in the Feudal Age with his own galleys, and he also gets the, the armor upgrades for free on his archers if he chooses to go for some. Leary sees fishing ships. At the same time, Leary was using a scout on Doubt's wood line, and Doubt now sees fishing ships. So, like, you have both scouts attacking, you have both groups of galleys attacking fishing ships, and uh, still we have yet to see a kill in this game. So, very crazy, wild, and even start. Yeah, Doubt losing his scout to the villagers, Leary microing away, and you know he's going to be on the hunt for that villager, the really weak one there. I think he's just happy to see Doubt running off of wood. He's very happy to see that. And now he sees it. Doink! Gets it and runs away. Yeah, Dave, you called it. Leary just slightly better with these small micro engagements. Yeah, Leary just even wanted to pull those villagers, create a little bit more extra idle time. Doing a good job with the galley to micro the one that Doubt was targeting away and get some extra hits in with that. Doubt lost a fishing ship. Leary hasn't lost a fishing ship yet. The KD is 5-1 currently. This is where Leary shines. You want to do six different things at once, then yeah, he'll take it. And he also has Saracen, so he has the faster firing galleys. And let's see if Dow can hold on here. It's been a rough start, but it's certainly manageable for him. And if this goes late, I'd love to see a turtle ship. I, I think Dow's thinking about shifting onto some land military. I saw on the left side of his base, he's made a barracks and Leary's scout was just about to scout the barracks and Doubt pulled four villagers and killed it before it got there. Doubt knew how important it was to hide that. You do not start with a barracks, obviously, on this map like others. So it's more of a commitment if you want to go land and that's what Doubt's choosing to do. And Doubt, who just lost his fishing ships, is going to happily snipe Leary's fishing ships. This is best case scenario. You kill, I kill yours, you kill mine, and, and Doubt doesn't have to worry about water too much. I think if you're Doubt in this situation too, you run around with the galleys, and then you don't produce any more water units, but you keep one garrison in each dock. So Leary has a whole whack of questions on whether you're still investing into water pressure. Meanwhile, you're making archers and you're going forward with a few villagers for land. So Leary has to continue water production, can't just go straight onto fish, and has no idea about your land army. The downside of going for this is, you know, you're probably up against Saracens who's upping to castle if Leary plays it right and Leary is well on his way. Um, and Leary has done the simple yet wise move to wall the left side because Doubt's going archers that way. He's even sending more villagers, so Doubt wants to maybe build towers there. Uh, Leary will probably get full water control, and when I saw him do this against Hera um, in their best of five, Leary was quick to adding more fishing ships. Yeah, he definitely utilizes the water once he's taken advantage there. Added a few more galleys, but maybe he stops production now and starts thinking about fishing ships. Doubt figuring out that he can't get into Leary's base. He's going to see the house. He's going to see the market. And he's going to place a tower right there. Awkward area <laughs> to just... push in for. Yeah, you can only build it with two. That's just because he. this is a desperate move for him. So I, I think this is going to turn into a game where Doubt has less economy. But... Koreans have this wacky potential because the guard tower upgrades free when they arrive to Castle Age. You go for wild Mackinel tower push. And there's, I, I could actually see that working. Wacky potential to get back on water too, if he really wants to. If at any point Leary kind of takes his focus out, L Doubt could go into turtle ships and take back water. I think Leary is going to have some decisions to make on how to address this. I would like to see a dock. Okay, Leary's already done it as he's fighting on water, but kind of more to the right side, Leary's docked so he can reboom with fish over there and get food eco. 
Uh, but maybe Monk Siege defense is the way to go to keep Doubt from pushing in further. Villagers are going to take a while to get in here, Tristan. Mm -hmm. Very long time, Doubt. He's got 12 on food. Leary's got 13. It is 38 eco versus 35. The difference being the fishing ships. Doubt might not have that potential to come back on water, Dave, because I think that dock's going to end up going down. Yeah, Doc's going to go down, and if he wants to get back on here, he's going to have to be sneaky on one of the sides or one of these little coves here. But Leary has War Galley stationed around the water, so he should have a heads up if Doubt decides to go for that. Doubt is just about to get through this house, but right as he gets through, Leary will have a Mangonel in defense. <laughs> yeah, good timing. Now, the towers are going to be insane. They'll have 10 range. So you could creep your way in with towers, but it'll just take a lot of time. I think Doubt's decision to add these town centers at home and, and boom behind this is good because have you ever been up against Koreans? You don't know what type of pressure they're going to send. They could go Maganel Tower. They could go Castle Drop. There's always that fear, and maybe Leary underproduces his economy if that's the case or if he's worried about that. And, oh, man, Maganel doing well, weakening, taking out an archer. And I think also the tower foundation was taken out there, if I'm not mistaken. If you're a Doubt fan, the last thing you want to see is like three crossbows versus a mangonel, <laughs> because that is not Doubt's specialty. <laughs> but he is attempting to put another tower down right beside the docks from Leary. Maybe he will have better success pushing in through the palisade walls and he's still roaming around to his credit with those archers in the back of Leary's economy so maybe a nice little distraction there for him he's, he's just got to be annoying yeah he's just got to distract like you said and this is less about killing things as the maganels there oh nice job there from doubt he finished the tower but less about killing things dave and more about uh distracting Leary so he can't make the proper decisions in other areas and doubt oh man he misses his cav archers, man. <laughs> he should be gone for cav yeah. archers. Come on, gotta kill some vills there. There we go. He gets one and he look at the idols from Leary. This is really good from Doubt. Yeah, this is really good distraction here from Doubt with just the three crossbows. Great job from him. Leary trying to kill these, maybe overthinking a little bit with that attack ground. <laughs> okay, now we've got a monk there. So the monk's going for conversion. Doubt running away. You have doubt only seven. Oh, no, 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 no. Tristan, look on the left side of the map. No, 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 no. There's no way, Doubt. Left near He's the towers. Archers. What? He's making Korean cab archers. And they get the defense upgrades, Dave. There's a bonus here. I mean, when in doubt, make cab archers. Oh, my God. And he's getting reward for it, bro. He'll kill more vills. Do you, do you think this is his plan all along, or do you think he just thinks it's funny <laughs> to make cab archers when no one else is? Well, Doubt's brain it doesn't work like the Meta Lords, all right? He, when he sees potential for unit to work, he says, oh, okay, let's give it a shot. And sometimes it doesn't work out, and we've seen that. But, like, while he could have had more success with these cab archers so far, he's found or reward simply because it, Cav Archers can run across the map. And Doubt is, he's not in the best position economically, but I think in some ways he might even be better off than Leary with having the second wood upgrade and having Horse Collar. So if he goes Maganel now, Leary might be confused by all this and Leary might not know what to do. Yeah, and Leary, remember, he does have eight fishing ships, so that villager count is a little bit deceiving at the top there doubt with a relatively similar eco he was up to multiple tc's faster than leary was yeah i okay chat when doubt won against yo with cab archers i was watching the cast and uh, there's many people out there who are just screaming cav archers bad this 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 and i think it's so hilarious <laughs> how ever since this conversation about cav archers being bad has started doubt has just been proving everyone wrong man but I never did I think he would go for Korean cab archers. This is this is just another level of, of odd. <laughs> I think if you're Doe, once you get enough cab archers here, I mean, you're not going to scale these into late game, right? You're probably, well, I could be wrong. It is Doe, but you're probably not aiming to mass up 40 or 50 of these. 
I think once you get to seven or eight cab archers, you could justify just running into Leary's Eco. Just like you did with the crossbows. You know he only has mangonels and monks in defense, which are going to be slow. You could potentially find a lot of damage in the back. Yeah, and if you just... The goal is, is honestly pressure, but drag this game out. Because a lot of these games go post him. So he's made it now, so he doesn't fall really far behind. But uh, Leary with good defense there. And I'm wondering now what Leary can do with some type of an Imperial Age play. If that is the case, I think Theracins typically would go for uh, Arbs. And Doubt, probably aware of that, will want to tower up, castle up, something along those lines for defense. Yeah, I'm wondering why Doubt is just hanging back with these Cav Archers currently. I saw he has enough stone for a castle, Tristan. So I'm getting a little bit nervous here, but I, I'm not thinking there's too many aggressive places he could potentially put it. I, he actually placed it and then thought twice about it, which was really funny. He placed it with the four villagers behind his towers, and then he immediately canceled it and went back to work. Now he's going to place it at home on that gold. So maybe like since Leary has so much on water, Dot wants to get a dock or two up and make a few turtle ships to clear up some fishing ships. That could work really well. I also don't know why Dot is engaging against, like he's taken a couple engagements against the war galleys with his cab archers. He's lost a few of them now to war galleys. It seems strange. Like, shouldn't you, if you're going to fight like that, shouldn't you have just sent them into Leary's Eco or loop them around to the other side earlier like you're doing right now? This is the this is the least stealthiest loop I've ever seen. <laughs> He's like, Leary's all over the shoreline and Doubt's just like, hey, this is where I'm going. What's up? I guess he sees that bill there. He takes, yeah, Korean Cav Archers are discounted, guys. Uh, that bonus I mentioned at the start of the game does apply to the Cav Archers, so there is some bonus, I suppose. Um, looks like Leary's going to imp soon, Dave. Now it's not too far off, but he is behind. And Doubt's slowly taking control of the map. You see the outposts on the bottom side. He's got his Cav Archers looping over there. Leary's going to struggle to push out to the left side with the guard towers there from Doubt. So kind of being cornered here. But once again, he does have that water control. So he can prevent Doubt from fully walling up. Um, Do you see what's coming out of Doubt's docks right now? He's yes. making them, boys. Yeah. He's making the turtles. And Dave, uh, viewers won't know this, but Dave is a turtle ship specialist. Dave, uh, how many turtle ships do you need before you can be confident enough to push out here? Against these war galleys? Yeah. Uh, Probably four would be a good number. Four or five. Okay. Well, he's, he has about that, but he's being... Leary's got a transport, though. Leary has a transport to the north of Doubt's base. You can see the yellow making its way left across the mini-map right near Doubt's economy. And he's going to make a archery range and an outpost there. But Doubt will see that quite quickly with the monk. Yeah, Doubt needs to go for guard towers right now. <laughs> guard towers right now because he was thinking that he could, he could keep an eye on the right and keep an eye on the left and that Leary would never be able to hit him. But... Yeah, that's a scary thing. And here come the turtle ships in the middle. Look at the big chunkers go. But, but Dave, they're very, very painfully slow. Yeah, that's the one disadvantage of turtle ships. They are one of, they're the war wagons of the sea. It seems like they're so clunky. They feel slow. They're a really strong unit, but it feels like if your opponent's microing like Leary is, you're not going to get decent engagements. Who's and rowing? Doubt will lose those two. Who rows those things? It's just like there's no sail. There's I don't I don't understand how they move. This is this is a poor remaster. I think Microsoft should should fix the whole game. This is bad. Yeah, a good job from Leary. And honestly, Dave, his fishing eco, it's already paid off for him, and he's investing into farms now, anyways, right? So going back on water right now might not be the, the biggest of priorities for Dell. Doubt, I love what he's done against this landing from Leary. He's made a couple guard towers. Uh, as soon as he gets up to Imperial Age, those will, of course, become keeps. And it's going to be very tough for Leary to push that back. He needs to add in some extra rams, which Doubt could potentially batter down with the villagers. So it's going to slow Leary down a whole lot. This is going to go on for a long time. For two reasons. One, because Koreans are hard to kill. 
Uh, and and he's got the towers up and fortified, but also, dude, Doubt will not want to call this one. Because if he does, then Leary will win the the uh, Red Bull Wololo 3 championship, man. And um, kind of looking likely. I mean, Doubt's still going to need to buy some time, but Koreans do have that crazy potential, right? Their Siege, their War Wagon, Coast Imp Army in some ways, could argue, stronger than Saracens. Still think well, they also have... Good. They also have potential to secure this map very nicely. If you get towers in good positions, especially along the shoreline with heated shot, it's really, really tough to push that back if you're in Leary's position, especially if you are have divided attention on land. You can see Doubt even expanding all the way to the right side of Leary's base, but he's got to figure out some sort of solution to the army here. The Rams are now taking out the Watchtower from him. Yeah, that was, that was pretty sick, man. He had the Arbalest inside of the Rams, Opt out to take the Cav Archers. Now, it does have some skirms here. But tower down, probably range down. In the end, doubt he'll be getting some imp upgrades, so maybe Arbalest is something that Leary needs to switch out of. Yeah, he's going to clear up the army, Tristan. And he's going to be able to batter down these rams. Whether he can clear up all the production buildings is another question. He's going to need some siege of his own. Yeah, um, we haven't really been able to look at it too much, but if you look back at the original towers from Doubt at Leary's base, the Keeps have been attacking those Maganels, and Leary's been repairing them every time he needs to. So he's been using Maganels to take out the Keeps, which takes forever, by the way, and of course I changed... Yeah, okay, my bad, Leary. <laughs> but I swear, it's been good up until this point, uh, but not so good now as Doubt will castle near those ranges on the left, Dave. And Doubt's going to take out the Sneak Villagers from Leary. All the Villagers that were building that forward, I think, have died. There's one guy left. Kill him, Doubt. Run, buddy, run. <laughs> uh, Leary hasn't set any waypoints or anything. I think Doubt will find him. And that kind of shows Doubt that Leary's thinking about Hussar, which I was expecting anyways. I'm sure Doubt was. Hussar is the go-to when the enemy's making skirms. What's Doubt's go-to unit to accompany that with? Can you go full trash, maybe? <sighs> it's... Uh, I mean, with Koreans, you gotta resort to the trash, right? You gotta go Halberdier, you gotta go Skirmisher, and just fend off the waves of attack from Leary until you can get yourself in a good enough position to maybe go for your stronger units. He's doing what I mentioned before, Tristan, which is towering the shoreline. So on the right side, he's got keeps along there. He's making turtle ships. So maybe he wants to take water control and try and hold it and hit Leary's land army at the choke points. We haven't had a single game go down the wire and down to the score. So it's probably a non-issue right now. But with everything that's on the line here and with out civilization i could actually see him trying to drag this out for a long time and so it's worth mentioning the reason there's a years counting on your screens because in the event that that hits zero whoever has the highest score wins but again that hasn't happened now he's got a, a bunch of crazy options to defend here onager keep i see him getting upgrades right now to maybe go hustar and korean hustars are the worst in the game but still helpful Am I a robot, Dave? Are we good? No, it's just a little bit of distortion, but we should be fine. I can still understand everything you're saying. Turtle ships coming out for doubt. He's going to try and take another engagement against the war galleys, but one of those was weak. You were talking about the collapsing foundation on caravels. How cool does it look on turtle ships? It looks just as cool. <laughs> and it's a lot more rare to see this, right? I'm enjoying it. And they fire so slow. <laughs> I like how the ship is completely intact when it's on 1 HP, but when it goes to 0 HP, it just spontaneously combusts. Perfect. Castle Foundation from Leary on the right side, also coming in for some light cap. I saw the unique technology from Doubt coming in. I believe that's the one that gives his towers more range. So he he's certainly planning on stalling this out, Tristan. That's what I'm thinking, man. Tower's still up left side and if i'm a robot i might give it to dave for 30 seconds is, is he gonna deny this castle we have raids on both sides but it's very possible that leary will lose the villagers building this castle here 
Yeah, Doubt, maybe not full attention on those villagers. They're still hammering away. Doubt, the light cab, he needs to attack faster. And the castle will go up. I didn't notice that wall foundation behind for Leary, so he manages to complete the castle, and Hussars are continuing to come into Doubt's base, but now we have war wagons on the field, which is a very strong unit uh, composition for Doubt. Is it sloppy from Doubt? Not wall up. It seems avoidable. He, he had the control on the left side of the How did the Hussars walk right through everything? Yeah, he had some control. I mean... Leary kept units garrison in the stables and then released them when he was ready. Leary still has villagers over there now that he's cleared up the keeps from Doubt, the initial tower rush from Doubt. And now he's building an army on the right-hand side, getting ready to push in siege workshops there, maybe some extra bombard cannons on that side. But Doubt is kind of back in contention for the water area and he's slowly building up his towers along the shoreline to secure the map and this is a big army of war wagons now complete with skirmishers look at the score i i i assume i'm still robo right now for viewers and i apologize but look at the score dave i mean 470 years ago that's a lot of time but now to do this yeah, Doubt could definitely do this, especially with the War Wagons. They scale very well as soon as you get them into big groups. Really, really tough to take favorable engagements against them. Leary's going to go for a castle on that side a bit farther back. Doubt's going to go for a castle of his own. Oh, man, it's so tough to see where this can go. But, like, how does Leary counter this army of War Wagons, especially if Doubt you know, gets the elite upgrade on them. It's going to be so, so difficult to take out. I guess Leary could think about going into Siege Onager, maybe think about going into Mamlu Mamluks later, maybe, but such a big eco investment as he seeks to come in with the Hussars here. He's going to back up for the time being. More war wagons in defense, more castles in defense on the right side from Doubt. So when Arbalest are out of the equation, you do have Mamluks, maybe it comes to mind, but... Amalukes have not been very convincing for me with DE. So, Leary is just running out of boost and options, and, and Doubt has stalled this game out big time. He's got more military. He has the lead war wagon completed now. He's pressuring Leary big time in his base, and the only thing for Doubt now is he needs to have enough to kill these speed ramps on the other side. There's a lot of plus for spam incoming, and it is possible for Leary to be able to speech push the right side of Doubt's base. I see yes. four wagons up the now, and Leary was desperately trying to repair that. And Dave, I mean, it's 190 pop for doubt, but the biggest thing for me is there's 23 war wagons that can't be killed. Yeah, and one thing you can certainly do with war wagons is just send them into the eco. They take so long to kill, so much HP and armor on those units. So Doubt's going to go in through that side. Leary really struggling to push in the south as well. Oh boy, this could be very bad for Leary. Doubt has clawed his way back into this game after Leary won the water. He's going to have wagons on the right, wagons on the left, towers and castles everywhere. So even if Leary takes out one position, there's going to be another one behind it. Doubt is making a case for himself and we might see ourselves going to a game number seven if this continues. Yeah, Doubt says, I can push you, you can't push me, basically. Uh, it's it's big war scene here. The like, Koreans are so questionable in many ways, but then you see it happen. Just like the Cav Archers people have questioned all tournament law, it's working out for him, Dave. And I don't think Leary can generally do anything against him. Okay, he's heavy camel now, but he'll need a lot of heavy camel. Yeah, heavy camel, but even heavy camel, Tristan, like war wagons shred. They absolutely shred when they get into a big mass and. Heavy Camel being trickled in isn't gonna do the trick for Leary. Doubt has more units behind this and Leary is gonna be forced to retreat from that area. And Doubt has trebuchets now, which he can safely guard with these war wagons. And at the south, he's pushing again. Leary has no answer to the Koreans. I hopefully, um, I just rejoined the call, Dave. I mean, Doubt can go halb if he needs it. And that's an answer to the Camel. Leary's lacking upgrade on the camel. Leary has no answer. Saracen can't kill this. Leary can't even force or defend. 
Yeah, I think you're going to have to take a little break here, Tristan, until we can get this figured out. I know this is an amazing game, but I'll continue until your voice quality is perfect for everybody. <laughs> and I'm sure the production team will let me know. Doubt pushing on the right side, doubt pushing in the top. Those two big balls of red that we see on the minimap are both groups of war wagons, a unit that we rarely ever see, and they're elite too. The castle will go down for Leary. The war wagons will head into the economy. Quite a few camels there. But like I said before, with 18 war wagons, it's going to take at least, I don't know, 15 camels, something like that to clear them up. And you better hope they're not in a choke point either. As Leary pushes back on both sides, camels coming in on the left hand side, war wagons with really good damage output. I think Doubt is winning that fight. And then on the right side of the map, Leary is also pushing back the war wagons with camels. But a decent defense from Doubt. I mean, we're going to have oh a boy. So is it better or is it not? <laughs> it's not getting any better for me. Leary, you know, I was talking about how strong the war wagons are. Leary has successfully pushed back on both sides. Unfortunately for him, his camels are going to run up against castles now, which they do not do very well against. I forgot that these are Saracen camels, which are so, so strong. Oh boy, what a performance here from Doubt. He's 2,000 score ahead now, as we're 380 years roughly, so we don't really have to look at the timer anytime soon, but he's pushing in now with Halberdiers. Leary teched into Camel to counter the War Wagons. Doubt teched into Halberdiers to counter the Camels. He's going to take them out quite nicely. And there's a lot of red in Leary's economy now. This seems like a matter of time until Leary calls it and we're going to the game number seven. Doubt with such an impressive strategy, such an impressive Civ pick on this map that we haven't seen before. He's punishing Leary for maybe underestimating the Korean ability and Doubt takes game number six. We're all tied up going into the final match. Oh boy, what a performance from Dow. It looked like he was behind. It looked like his trush just couldn't get any momentum early. Running into the market, running into the house falls from Leary, losing the water early, but he managed to get up to the castle age at a competitive time. He managed to get cav archers um, raiding into Leary's economy. The couple crossbows he sent did a lot of damage. Delayed, delayed, delayed until he could get to Imperial Age and lock down his position and then start creating the war wagons. I can't say enough about that. The strategy won over the execution. The storyline we were talking about coming into this set and Doubt takes game number six. We'll go to the statistics screen now and hopefully that'll give us a few hints on how we took this. I mean, the military stats pretty similar for both players although the buildings raised a lot higher for doubt as he pushed back those bases from leary economy looking a bit better for leary on the food a lot better actually but wood and stone collected the big differences here for doubt leary faster up to all the ages as well doubt and leary with a similar villager count and then we look at the timeline pretty even across the board but once Doubt got to the Imperial Age, he started building military, building military, building military, and there was no response from Leary. I can't believe we're going into a game number seven, and I hope Tristan's back with improved Hello. audio quality for this. Hello, Tristan. Keep talking. Do I sound like a robot? You sound pretty good to me right now. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> I... I had so much, I had so many words and I had so much excitement to let loose. <laughs> so Dave, you did it for me, man. Game seven and we know the map, uh, it will be Acclivity. My God, dude, I can't believe doubt what he's been able to do in these finals. Crazy, crazy stuff. I love how that stuff always happens on like the pivotal game of the tournament. Like that. <laughs> That was such an amazing performance picking Koreans. We asked so many questions about it when he initially drafted. We thought it might be a mean pick, might be a throwaway. But doubt proving that he has a strategy locked down for Koreans. And wow, what an impressive showing. And we're going into game number seven, Acclivity. Tatars left for Leary, Vietnamese left for Leary. 
Mayans and Huns left over for dough. Is this how we're going to end it? Are we going to end it with cab archers? Is that what it comes down to? Because Dal picked Huns pretty high and he saved it up to this point. And Leary picked Tatars very high and he saved it up to this point. And Huns, ha or, or sorry, Tatars has been very, very frequent on acclivity. Not saying we'll see cab archers, but I think it will be Huns versus Tatars. And what an excellent way to finish off the finals, Dave. It seems very fitting, doesn't it? I mean, coming into this tournament, maybe the, the faith in Cav Archers was at an all-time low. A unit that we saw for a lot of Age of Empires history. Ever since the Conqueror's expansion came out, like people were playing Huns, people were playing Cav Archers, and then suddenly a year ago that stopped uh, with Definitive Edition. And maybe we've seen the beginning of a rebirth. Certainly exciting times. I see the civilizations here going into game number seven, Doubt versus Leary, and it is Tatars for Leary, and it's Mayans for Doubt. And this seems, it seems so fitting because when I think about Doubt, Tristan, the Civ that I associate with him the most is the Mayans. Yep, I, I agree. Um, many, the, the, the struggle is for the people who are here right now, 99% of you weren't around back in the day when that would pretty much only play Mayans. <laughs> Team game tournaments, out pocket Mayans every single time. He's probably played more with Mayans than any other Civ. Maybe Huns is up there because, you know, that's been a thing. But Mayans, perhaps a Civ that could dominate against the Tatars if they get to Elite Eagle and the Tatar players thinking about uh, the Cav Archers. But there's a lot to break down. There's a lot to talk about, right? The Keshiks are still available. I think Tatars are better economically. And the pressure's got to be on. I know Doubt's been around for 20 years. He's feeling the pressure. And I know Leary won last time around. He's got to be feeling it too. Execution needs to be at the highest level to see who is the champ, Dave. What a moment. I'm finding it hard to keep a smile off my face. Like this is, where else would you want to be right now? But the grand finals of this event, we're in game number seven and it's Doubt versus Leary, Tristan. In 2021, Wow, what an impressive showing from both these players. Leary will be opening with the archery range as the Tatars and Doubt. I don't see anything for him yet. Nothing? Staying on a barrack. So if he hasn't added a range yet, my, my thought process is he wants to go with an early market and he wants to go cast like greedily. But he's up against Leary. And Leary's known for, for piling on pressure early. Is this too greedy, maybe? It feels a little bit too greedy for a game number seven. I can tell you that much right now. I mean, he's going for the impressive walls all the way around his base. Maybe it looks like a little bit of MBL walling here from Doubt at odd angles to secure all of his resources. And Leary will now be going into a stable to complement his archer range. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So there's big difference here then. Like, okay, Doubt's just shown his hand with the market, and he's, he's actually done a great job to wall the front of his base that far. That way, Fletching Archers couldn't range his resources. Um, If Leary's out of the stable, that would normally mean scouts, but he might not break through, Dave. I, I don't know if Leary has really hit this type of a wall before, uh, both, both figuratively and literally, right? Because he's faced greed, but this is insane greed. Yeah, this is Look, insane greed, and Leary's... Doubt is on stone. He's going to try and go plumes? <laughs> <laughs> Only Doubt, man. Only Doubt would think, oh, Empire Wars. Hmm, against Leary. Ooh, really aggressive player. Hmm, what's the best strategy here? Oh, I know. I'll just wall, and I'll go fast castle into plumed archers. We'll see if it can work out for him. Important to note that he did add a few extra eagles from his barracks, so he does have some presence in the middle of the map to potentially stop any army from Leary coming around. But Doubt will be clicking to the Castle Age. Leary's resources looking okay, but he's going to be behind. I guess if, since Mayans don't have Cav Archers, <laughs> you've got to go Plumes. <laughs> Closest thing. I mean, it's... If he was Vietnamese, I'm sure he'd go Ratten Archers as well. I mean, I like, whatever's closest. I, could, I don't know if you guys hear that banging, but I can hear Hera's head banging against his wall all the way up there in Canada. Because <laughs> Hera's so outspoken. Never Cav Archers. 
And Delt's been winning with Cav Archers. Never plumed archers. And Delt's in the finals against Leary. About to try plumed archers. And I think it's so bold and so crazy that Leary is, is expecting full eagle. And I, I don't think he ever expected to see plumed archers. Yeah, he saw the eagle numbers and he saw the walls and he saw the market, which usually in Empire Wars tells you that your opponent yep. is... You know, producing eagles from maybe one barracks in the feudal age, he'll add a second and a third as he goes up, and then he'll use that market uh, to get the gold to continue production. That's why he's staying at home a little bit safe. He doesn't want to be caught off guard. He wants to build his archer numbers, and he's fairly confident he can take the engagements against the eagles. Oh. But like you said, doesn't expect the plumes, but he might see the stone here. Yeah, Leary's got to be like, what? Look at the scout. He's so confused. The scout's like, wait, what? Did I just see? Is that really? He's trying to process his thoughts. Doesn't know what to think or what report to send back to the leader at home. And, uh, you know, Leary is walled and Leary will be in Castle Age in about 70 seconds. So I think the doubt needs to drop that castle and drop it fast. Yeah, and the most doubt thing of all time would be <laughs> seeing that castle come up forward. But doubt opts for a defensive one, which is the far better decision in this case. He'll have safe production and he'll get the plumes onto the field pretty quickly here. Castle will go up at around the same time Leary is just reaching Castle Age. So really, really good build for Doubt. So there's all the hype that Doubt's doing something wild, but let's talk about reality for a second. His four eagles are pretty much useless currently. Uh, he's about to be on one plumed archer, one ranged unit, and currently, Leary has 10. Andy's getting crossbow. Andy's getting bodkin. And he could break through palisade walls. He could range wood lines. He could range stones. I mean, there's reasons why, especially in Empire Wars, waiting for something like plumed archers is not seen frequently. Um, but Leary being patient here with his archers, Dave, just waiting a bit. That way, Doubt doesn't see him until it's too late. Yeah, let's see if Doubt notices this as Leary comes in. Notices it right away. So great job from Doubt. And, you know, Tristan, you two told me you were a hype caster, but you had a lot of negatives to say about this plumed archer strategy from Doubt. All the weaknesses no, it's, there. It, it, it's not. Listen, it's it's the reality. There's a pro and con. Plumed archer's the better archer. All right? The better archer, man. But how do you use it? You've got to defend right now, and you don't have as many units. Down hitting Leary's base with his eagles and his plumes. He's going to get behind Leary's wood line. And Leary trying to pick off Vils, and he hasn't been able to find any picks just yet. Yeah, I'd like to see Doubt add a few extra houses or something near his gold so Leary couldn't sit near those TCs and range the gold. But Leary's going to decide that he can't really hit anywhere. He's going to leave yeah. Doubt's base, so... Good defense from Doubt, and the pressure now is going to be on Leary's wood lines and Leary's gold at the back. Yeah, and Leary forced to to play defense against this when he wanted to take initiative. It's just a doubt, very doubt thing to be able to defend, but wood lines in and also scale barding. So I think against four eagles and three plumes, those knights would be fine. So Doubt's going to meet up with his main force. Leary's still looking to do damage. Leary just killed the deer because he figures, ah, I can't kill Doubt's villagers. Got to kill something. I'm bloodthirsty. Uh, but uh, close game, Dave, even despite the wacky plume choice. Yeah, now Doubt's getting to a good number of plumes. He can hit and run the knights. He's saving his villagers at his economy. Leary still uh, hasn't killed a villager. And Leary just now getting to a second town center as well. And Leary's been unlucky. There's quite a few villagers that are on low HP currently. So, Doubt was close to losing some. The, what do you always say about plumes, Dave? You've got to keep that mass alive, right? It does take a long time to produce them. Um, even for a long time back in the day, we'd see players forget Bod Canero. They just boom, keep the plumes massing, and then eventually get Bod Canero with Crazy Eco. You talk about Mayan privilege all the time, Dave, where Mayans can get away with so much, and Doubt has gotten away with it here so far. Yeah, and he's building up that mass. I think he, he's thinking about taking a good engagement against the crossbows and the knights. It's going to be a little bit tougher, though. Um, it would be easy against the crossbows, but with these knights mixed in, especially with that hill mixed in against Tatars, yeah. I, I feel like there's potential here for you to misjudge an engagement and maybe throw away too many plumes. 
There he doesn't have ballistics. He only has nine crossbows. Doubt has 18 plumed archers with ballistics. But that is quite a few knights. So like you said, patience is needed. And look at Leary. He's kind of he's trying to dodge those shots so his crossbowman can do the work for him. And this is something you would expect from Leary. You just would never expect it to be up against plumes. Such a weird moment. And Leary with a good fight there, Dave. Yeah, Doubt just kind of standing still with the plumed archers, hoping that the arrows would hit, but Leary with the impressive micro in front as a shield enabled him to shoot the plumed archers behind, and Doubt's being pushed back. And he has to consider that every fight he takes uphill, uphill here is against Tatars. So it has to make him a little bit nervous about continuing to engage. Doubt also late to that third TC. He's going to add it eventually. Hello, lady. Hello, move. Please, please, thank you. Okay, and... Leary's back on the gold. I like how Leary's asking questions there as he gets those vil picks of Dow. Because Dow could try and go forward. But every time that Leary doesn't see Dow's plumed archers, he starts knocking on the door there. Or more specifically, the gold. Yeah, and I, I love how Leary's staying put at the back. Like, a lot of other players would maybe try and loop around to another area of Doubt's base to see if they could do some damage, but Leary knows that if he builds up army behind here, Doubt will have to come back and address this. And if he's not here, it's like you said, could go hit the gold. Yep, he hits the stone there, Dave. I, I also like how he's producing knights and and crossbows. He's producing, like, he's kind of playing this like Huns, honestly. Stable and archery range production. Now getting chain barding armor. Doubt has to abandon that whole wood line. And while Doubt has more villagers, it doesn't feel like his position's all that strong. Doubt needs a good engagement because if he can get access to gold, get up towards uh. him and switch into eagles, this should be great for him. Oh, this is nerve wracking if you're a Doubt fan on the right side. Doubt is going out for a TC. He has quite a few plumed archers, but there's knights over there as well. So if Doubt loses this engagement, the TC could potentially be denied, Tristan, and his plumed archer numbers could be wiped up. Leary taking a really good fight here. Thankfully, I think the TC goes up, Dave. A few villagers will go down, but Doubt will be able to, to remain with some plumes, the TC garrisons. But Doubt, get your plumes back towards your main base. Gotta be careful, these knights have plus two. I can't help but feel like maybe Doubt didn't realize the knights had plus two. Is Leary happy with these fights, I'm sure. Fantastic decision from Leary to go double stable to complement the uh, the crossbows as well. It's done so much for him. The Blooms just can't take a straight up engagement. And while he's taking these big fights, he could send a couple knights here or there. I saw him killing villagers on the left before, yep. and he's raiding right now in Doubt's economy with a couple knights. So he's applying all sorts of pressure in a very Leary-like fashion right now. Just the idle time's insane. Doubt with five and a half TC, five and a half minute TC idle time in this game. It's only four and a half for Leary. And then villager idle time. Actually, uh, yeah, Doubt's at 36 minutes villager idle time. It's only 11 for Leary. And the KD in general is so good. Uh, Leary hasn't lost a single villager and Leary continues to take out plumes every time he sees them. So uh, we we laughed, we joked, we we talked about switching up meta and all that. But I think the doubt is got to realize, man, that this has got to be more about Imperial Age and potentially Eagle Warriors. But we'll see. He's committed a lot to plumes. Switching out of them might not be on the cards just yet. Committed a lot, but he only has seven on the field. So that shows how much damage Leary has done and how he's forced Doubt into fights. And he still has knights in the back. We've seen this consistently across the tournament. Leary, perhaps the best player at uh, raiding opponents' eco while he distracts them somewhere else. Yeah, and if, if Doubt had 30 plumes in the middle right now, you just know Leary would be doing it anyways. <laughs> like mm -hmm. He has the confidence to move out and raid in situations that others don't, so... Are we going to see a very Doubt-esque castle soon? He's about to get enough for another castle. He could easily go for a safe castle for more plumes, but he might also feel some confidence to castle the middle and control the map. Not so sure. I think if he takes out these knights, he might think about it. Um... Well, he's going for the safe play, I think. He's going to place it. Yeah, he's going to place it between the town centers right there. And he's got some monks around. Doubt with one relic. Doubt with 13 plumes. Leary investing further into Castle Age, going for fully upgraded Elite Skirmisher. The only thing that he's going to miss then is the Ballistics upgrade. 
Yeah, that feels like something you're going to want later in the game, too. So that's that's a pretty good upgrade from Leary. He goes forward with these skirmishers, trying to look for a good engagement against the plumed archers. And Doubt might lose his numbers again after he's built them back up. Dave, I'm starting to get a little concerned for Leary. And I know everything you just said is true and skirms are great, but what can Mayans so easily switch into if they have access to gold? Yeah, eagles. Uh, Yikes. Yeah, and then you have elite skirm mainly. I mean, that's not going to cut it. Yeah, well, I, I don't see doubt thinking about eagles yet. I haven't seen any upgrades come in for him. Looks still like plumed archers. And it looks like he's maybe thinking about going up to the Imperial Age, looking at his resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he converts a knight there, so the knight's being used against the skirmishers. He's getting some good hits in with that knight as well. Also, it's 18 plumes. There's about 10 skirmishers there. Also, has another monk to convert an additional knight, but he's forgotten about that, so that hurts to see. And Dal may be happy to trade against this and back away to his castle. He's about to click up to Imp. I, like, what can Leary do? against an eagle switch. I guess the only thing is deprived out of gold, but elite eagle with Mayans just shreds to Tars. Yeah, it's going to be really, really difficult for Leary to counter that. He's still keeping up the knight production, though. So maybe he's hoping to build up a few knights, upgrade them once he gets to Imperial Age, and then take a favorable engagement if Doubt decides to switch into eagles. It's 104 villagers for both players, even economy. The big difference being that Doubt has not been making units that cost food. He's not made many eagles yet. He's been making plumes, which is wood and gold. And um, he's not mining any more stones. So I think we are going to see him. Oh, nice job from Leary with the knight. Leary's camping those resources there. Um, but but yeah, I think we're going to see some barracks go up, Dave. Doubt's going to try and get this switch. But then again, like maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. He still has two castles producing plumes, and even just Bracer on the plumed archers would be a good start. Where do you push once you get that big ball of plumes? Because you're going to have to send Trebs forward. Or yeah. do you send villagers forward for a forward castle placement? I hate the fact that I'm I... saying that with Doubt in the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think with the way Doubt plays it, he actually uses his plumes to control gold spots around the sides. Because his... his play so far in this game is not expanded to the sides and leary has yellow dots so knights checking those areas so i think the best thing leary can do is is continue to deprive doubt of gold and make doubt spend a lot of time chasing his knights and then i guess for tatars you could you could honestly justify their hussar with silk armor because they get insane pierce armor with maybe Do you go Hussar Cavalier or maybe Hussar Cavalier? I, I guess he'll have to start with one thing and then switch out. Well, he's going to have to start with going to the Imperial Age first because Doubt's about to be there. Doubt will click Thumb Ring here to upgrade his plumes. And I don't see the Eagle Switch that you were talking about, mm -hmm. Tristan. He's perfectly content nope. to just keep massing plumes. Yeah, he's struggling as he's sending some plumes to the back now. He's struggling to get some TCs up on these stones and golds. And that's something Leary's done a tremendous job with. And here's a fight that Leary will like because these plumes are not fully upgraded yet. And they're pretty far from it, actually. Doubt has to back away from that one. Yeah, maybe the, maybe this fight will convince Doubt that he needs something else. Yeah. Because Leary is trading pretty well with just pure Castle Age units. I don't know why Doubt's oh, taking man. that still. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, what do you have to do? Abandon six or seven farms there? Just be patient. Wait for some upgrades. If he is getting some gold, he is getting some stone now along the edge of the map. Leary will know he's on a bit of a clock. He'll know that he needs to get Imp himself. He's going to behind this. This is great pressure from Leary. And this is a great game to finish off this series and this tournament. I seriously, I, I don't know what direction this is going to go. I feel like Leary's map control is stellar on the outer ring. But Doubt's faster imp has so much potential as well. Yeah, and Leary's eco was untouched too, dude. Like, Doubt yeah. never really got any really good raids in on him. The plumes were mostly kept at home because Leary's amazing uh, military pressure behind Doubt's base. And that enabled him to go, I think he was up to like five TCs super early, get his boom rolling. And he's actually placing a castle foundation on the middle hill. So Leary's thinking purely about map control.
If you look at Leary's point of view, he has so much of the sides of the map scouted, or the back of Dal's map, as he's actually raiding Dal right now because he knew he knew about that stone. Dal went to the stone, and Leary was just right back on it. There's some real mobility at work here, something that Leary did successfully against every single player that he beat in this tournament. 25 military for both, roughly. But Dal's been an imp for a while, and there it is. There it is, the infantry upgrade. He wants to go towards Eagles. Do you think it's Eagles, or do you think he's possibly considering the Pike line as well? Honestly, maybe you go Halb first, because it's not the most expensive thing to make. And you already have a uh, Elite Plume, which costs food and wood. Go Halb, and then once you bank up gold, then switch into Eagle. Halb might be the wiser move, but Eagle's the more yeah, is the deadlier move. Yeah, and Eagle's uh, more of a raiding unit where you can hit the sides. Um, but at the same time, you can do that with your with your own plumes. And we get our answer right here. He is going to start upgrading his eagles. It'll take some time, though, to get those fully upgraded, to get the production buildings in there, and to get eagles onto the map. And that's time that Leary needs to start building up his army. We were asking all sorts of questions about what Leary would go for. Keshiks are a decent answer to eagles, but not so much to plume nurtures. Yeah, it took Doubt. So when Doubt hit him, he spent a lot of time fully upgrading the unit he had committed towards. Leary's going to have to do a similar thing for a bit. So he's currently getting the skirm upgrades. And then he can th worry about something else. But Doubt's economy. He has 149 villagers with Mayans. The resources last longer with Mayans. Like, that is such an overboom. And I genuinely feel yeah. like if Doubt is 31 on gold, Pretty soon he can delete 30 or so villagers for pop space and just send in 30, 40, 50 elite eagles and end this game. El Dorado will give those eagles 100 HP. Leary doesn't even have the imp armor upgrade for his knights yet. Cavalier's not even on the way. There's so much yellow on the map right now, Tristan, and the map control looks great, but I'm getting very, very nervous for Leary because El Dorado is such a strong technology. And we can see Doubt already producing those eagles. I just hope that Doubt immediately sends the eagles to raid because I think he has the potential to do so much damage to Leary's economy. I think he'll do it, Dave. I mean, the plumed archers themselves can already take so many sick fights against these knights. Uh, that's maybe not the best engagement that Dalt would one run of them. as he's <laughs> not <yeah>. one of them. <laughs> I picked, I picked the wrong. Time. Trust me. All right. Trust me. So many sick fights. So many. As well, the knights nights aren't moving. Item. Yeah, there, there's a patrol bug, which we didn't see, I guess. So he actually ended up losing more than he would have wanted to, Leary. Uh, there's more plumes on the other side. And this is all before the Eagles arrive. And here are the Eagles, 100 HP. In the middle of the map, Doubt has 29 on gold. Yeah, and there's so many holes in Leary's base too. It's like Swiss cheese at the front. So once Doubt clears up this military, he can run into the farming eco. He can run into the sides. He's now pop cap Tristan, 150 villagers. Maybe he needs Leary to raid. Do you delete a few walls and say, hey, come on in, kill some vills? I, I, ideally, you would calculate it, I think, <laughs> and delete them yourself. <laughs> uh, but the maybe, eagles are maybe just go, go everywhere. Yeah, maybe go for a doubt castle or two. Lose 20, 30 well, villagers. It looks like he might be going for one on the right. This is over. Look at the look at the military number. It feels. I mean, there's control everywhere for doubt, and I I say it because I've seen Mayans dominate so frequently in these positions. I definitely just called it too soon there. There's still 50 on food and 27 on gold for Leary, but I would hate this position. If Doubt just switches into Halb Eagle, Leary can't do anything. And Leary now raiding on the right side of Doubt's economy, but Doubt going for that forward mining camp also has a castle foundation over there. Doubt might actually thank Leary for this raid. He had too many villagers with mines. You can justify having like anywhere from 90 to like 110 villagers with your final yeah. final uh, army composition in Imperial Age. So killing a few there will not hurt Doubt all that much and the eagles are still coming. This is uh, something that Doubt needs to make sure he deals with. That castle in the middle, every time he runs by that, He's losing HP on his Eagles, and he's actually, he has got a, his gather point set there. Like, he wants to destroy the castle with the Eagle Warriors. I think a few Rams would be really helpful for him, as uh, he's chasing down the raid from Leary. And then on the left side of Leary's Eco, we have Plumes and Eagles in. 
And this is why I was so worried for Leary. Doubt has consistently more eco. He has consistently more on gold. He has a more, I'd say, a, a better mix with plumes and eagles. And the Cavalier just aren't cutting it. And, and yeah. so this is all before the Halberdier switch would come in. Leary is, he's going to have to have some crazy raids, but also have to defend himself from the raids incoming from Doubt. Yeah, he's going to have to secure some gold control, too. His golds are looking awfully exposed, especially with plumes running around. That's probably his safest one back there. The plumes are right beside it. He's done an amazing job to stay in, um, to produce Cavalier and to take some decent fights. But Doubt with the Eagles, like you said early, Tristan, just seems like Tatars don't have an answer to this. I, I know. And it was so risky, Dave. It was so risky, man. It's never been seen before in this event. And he saved it for game seven. That's just incredible. I mean, it's one thing to have one or two strats and one or two games where you have some tricks planned and some, some anti-meta strats, but it's been half the games that Doubt has played in this tournament. I, I am speechless right now. If he's able to finish off the game this way, no one would have expected Mayans here. He is getting raided and Leary is still holding on. Leary at 135 pop and, and Doubt at 170. Yeah, but I saw some Spearman in the queue from Doubt. So maybe he's thinking about teching into Pikeman now, teching into Halberdier just in case Leary gets a big army of Cavalier and manages to take some good fights against the Eagles. Oh boy, but the Eagles are taking great fights against the Cavalier. Feels like Leary's on a clock right now. He needs to make something happen soon with these Cavalier. Otherwise, Doubt will take the Red Bull Wallalo 3 Championship. This is unbelievable. Countdown. That clock is a countdown to his funeral, man. Doubt is just... He, all he really needs to do is, is continue to mix in the infantry raids and incorporate some Halberdiers now. It seems like he's happy to just, just spam click and, and filter them in. He has arson already, Dave, so the Eagles can take out town centers if he wants to, but he's yeah. going for farmers, taking fight after fight. Again, that castle finally going to be dealt with with some trebs at the same time. And I think Leary, after seeing the score and, and after having to put up with all these raids, has realized for a while, this is over. He is not going to retain his championship. He'll go below 100 pop here, Dave. There's no chance for Leary. What a huge moment for Doubt here. What a performance in Red Bull Wallalo 3. And the game is over. Doubt's won the championship. Unbelievable. He beat Mr. Yo in the first round 3-1 using strategies that no one had seen before. Mr. Yo was Red Bull Wallalo 1 champion. Makes it to the finals. And then he beats Leary, who was Red Bull Wallalo 2 champion with unique strategies unique civilizations, and excellent gameplay. Uh, he's the oldest participant in this event. He's been around longer than virtually anyone. And he, he's like a fine wine, Dave. He just keeps getting better. This is a great moment for him. I can't wait to speak to him. It's a great moment for fans. And while we're excited for doubt, respect to Leary as well, because what a finals he was able to bring us. This, this could have gone either way, Dave, with a few moments here or there. Like three straight big tournament finals in a row for Leary as well. Yeah. His quality is undeniable. And we thought going into this, like uh, everyone thought Leary was probably unstoppable, especially after he made it through Hera. Like who's going to stand in his way? And Doubt was in the corner with his hand up going, me? <laughs> I'm going to stay in his way. And he took game number seven. So, so impressive. Let's go to the statistics. See what it can tell us about this game. Oh, I'm supposed to have something to say. Oh my, wow. Okay, sorry. I, I We'll get there. 322 kills. Military count. This really only happened in the Imperial Age for Doubt, but much higher than Leary. Economically, Doubt, who for a while there was being deprived of gold by Leary with those knights and crossbows. Uh, Doubt ended up with the most gold. Plenty of wood, plenty of stone. Tough civilization to beat in that spot it's just not a sieve that you've seen play out like that before Doubt made it work dave and look at the timeline i mean the greed to go for plumes was uh, punishing in some ways right because he wasn't able to keep the plumes alive all that well and counter leary but what he did do was he had his economy in a position where it was stable enough 
hold on and get to the faster imperial age the faster imperial age the leap plumes the eagles got him that win what's crazy about doubt's performance in that game too dave is i don't think that there's much more leary could have done that's the crazy thing i think what if you what else could have for, happened if you don't go for the early pressure uh with the archers and you let doubt wall the way he did the game pretty much plays out the same way unless you're going forward with some sort of like siege workshop push but then doubt has a castle so it's really really tough to get in there i think it was great from doubt uh to risk it to go out for the greedy walls uh to get the castle up and then to add the second tc right away go for that mayan greed it paid off so well i can't like i'm so happy for doubt it feels like you know i'm sad for leary as well it's i'm sad for leary he got to game number seven he got to the finals again just missed out by one game but it feels like he's going to continue to have his chances doubt hasn't had a chance to take a huge tournament in a while and the fact that he did it is just unbelievable well played to doubt it's uh what a moment what a weekend what a weekend for age of empires too wow he had to qualify he was not he was not in the top eight he didn't get a free spot doubt had to qualify for this tournament and he is very quick to tell people including myself that he shouldn't have to qualify for these tournaments <laughs> so i mean granted they they took the top eight based on the previous red bull wololo um but anyways i you know when he gets in here we'll have to pick his ear dave um big moment for him and i think this whole tournament Really, the tail end of 2020 and early 2021 has shown us anyone can win right now, which is so sick. Uh, it's no longer just the same player all the time. We still have our preconceived notions based on players' reputations, and a lot of that is based on fact, but we've had different players winning tournaments. Very good for our scene. Oh, man. Um I'm with you though. Respect for Leary too. I, you, you never want to see someone lose in a game seven like that. I know Leary really wanted that, but he had his victory. So I don't feel as bad as it would, if it would have been someone else. And now <laughs> the chirping that we were talking about before red, uh, doubt winning against the two winners from Red Bull Wallolo one and two can become a reality. Maybe we'll have a yeah. Red Bull Wallolo four that kicks doubt out, <laughs> but I'm sure he yeah. won't let this one go for at least a decade or two. Well, you know, who says that this needs to be the only thing to brag about? You know, there's he has the level. There will be more events. I I think that there will be plenty more trash talk from from doubt based on tournament performances. Um, Doubt's apparently not responding right now. Uh, it's probably a big moment for him. If I were him and, you know, everything that's gone down, I probably would step away from my computer all excited. Now, Doubt's really tall. So if he were to, like, if he were to stand up and jump and, like, throw his hands in the air, he might, like, you know, punch his arm through the ceiling. So <laughs> hopefully that didn't happen. Um, but, yeah, apparently he'll be in here in just a second. Don't tell him I said that, by the way. It'd be awkward if he joined I just... right now. It's pretty late in Serbia right now. I just hope he didn't wake up the neighborhood <laughs> when he took that final game. Because if I no doubt, he was probably super excited about that. Oh, man. He just ordered some high-quality shisha. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's what he's doing right now. Oh, I have no words. Like, I'm supposed to have words because I'm a, I'm a commentator in this game and I'm being paid to commentate here. But, like, what a moment. What a weekend. What a tournament. We thought the meta for Empire Wars was developing in Red Bull Wallalo 2. We thought it got to a good point. And then the meta in this tournament has just blown us all out of the water. Like so many unexpected strategies, Civ picks, unit compositions, Cav Archers. Yeah. And uh, I, it's been amazing. When I interviewed Doubt after his semifinal, um, he said there is no meta here. And when he said that i you know i laughed because i understood his point that you know some things haven't been figured out but i think that maybe 75 percent of players believe that there's a meta in a lot of ways certain civs are better certain units are better you should do certain certain things and you know if doubt didn't win this tournament then you questioned doubt for some of his choices doubt showed us at least you're able to play non-meta you know um and he he punished meta in many ways and 
it, there's a lot of thinking that players will have to do going into the next one, which is similar, I guess, to Red Bull Wololo 1 to Red Bull Wololo 2, and then from 2 to 3, things did change here or there with Civ preferences. But I'm, I'm just so happy for the guy, man. Um, <laughs> I, I could tell the viewers are as well. Big, big moment. And I'm sure his teammates are as well. Like, he's got yeah. probably Viper and Tato waiting. They were kicked out of the tournament, but I think maybe in their hearts, if you told them, you know, you're going to be kicked out a little bit early, but your buddy Doubt is going to win, maybe they would agree to that deal. <laughs> I yeah. think they love they love their teammates so much, even if they won't say it straight to his face. <laughs> They're probably over the moon for him. I think I think that's how it goes with most teams, you know? You know, if you lose, then you root for your teammates, and uh, a lot of these guys normally practice. A Tato is probably losing his mind, man, because I know, like, Doubt, um, so many times when he wins, he gives Tato credit for being able to train with him. I think they have the two best minds for the game and thinking out of the box, and uh, I'm sure that, that that paid off. Okay, we'll look at the bracket now uh, as we wait for Doubt. He will get here eventually. Maybe we'll have to wait an hour, but... The wait is worth it. <laughs> and this was Doubt's path. And we can break down some other big things that happened too. But for Doubt in particular, he was up against Mr. Yo. He beat Mr. Yo 3-1. A convincing best of five, Dave. And then a convincing best of five against ACCM as well. Great tournament result for him. And then Doubt was up against Leary, the king of Red Bull Wololo 2. Uh, I, I mean, I didn't disagree with you when earlier in the tournament you said that you think Leary is the best for these settings. Well, I think Leary's going to have to go back to the drawing board a little bit after this result because a couple of those things he was not expecting, I'm sure. Oh, boy. Maybe we'll see a few copycat strategies in the next Empire Wars event where Leary is trying to replicate what Doubt has done in this one, I'm sure he's probably sitting there thinking, I got beat by Koreans? <laughs> like, like, who is it? And they made Cav Archers? Who is this yeah. guy? He made it work, man. He made it work. Yep. Um, I, I love that. Like, you know me, I'm always, I look through player profiles and I'm trying to find people who are going for wacky strats all the time. Or just non-meta strats, non-meta games. Because too many people are constrained by that, by that meta and it, it's a little stale after a while, and there's a reason that I've been casting a lot of doubt games over the years, because he's that type of guy, and sometimes to find out if something works, you just gotta, gotta try it. You, you gotta accept that one way isn't the right way, and, and go down a couple different roads. But let's, let's talk upsets in general in that first round of this main round of eight bracket, Dave. Um, doubt beats yo. That was an upset. Okay. Um, I'll be able to remember everything else. Vinchester and ACCM, they, they both surprised many to even get there. Uh, Vinchester was able to win the group by beating Hera. Then ACCM was able to beat Tato and move on. Um, and then as you continue on it, oh God, it's been a long day, Red Bull. Come on, just put it put back for a second. Uh, you had the, well, Harvest Leary Hera was a big one. Yeah, Le mm -hmm. Leary Hera was a big one where Leary, he goes down 2-0 and reverse sweeps Hera and then this might actually be the biggest upset of the round of oh, 100%. eight. Oh, 100%. Velez beat Viper, dude. And it was it was clinical from Velez and he was able, of course, to take a win against Leary in the semifinal as well. I mean, this is, this is an amazing tournament for so many players who have really surpassed their previous uh, accomplishments and and made more of a name for themselves i guess as we go forward throughout the year um oh doubt's here hello doubt doubt's here hello doubt uh, hello guys what's up <laughs> how are you feeling doubt let it all out the people want uh, to know. <laughs> i just woke up my kids because i was screaming in the house yeah and now they are screaming as well yeah like, my wife wow. was actually following this. She doesn't understand the game, but she was following. She was, like, nervous, standing up, walking around the room. And then I started screaming, so she enters the room and, like, yeah, full celebration right now. Been a while. Been a while, man. I am so happy for you. Uh, did you did you order the world's most expensive shisha after the tournament win? That's what viewers thought. That's for tomorrow, for sure. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
Dave, have Adam, man. We're going to grill you with some questions, and then we'll let you get back to celebrating. Congratulations, man. We're really happy for you. Thank you. Take us through the set, Doubt. So going into this, you you knew that Leary was a great player. You picked some unorthodox strategies to deal with him. Was it your plan to go with towers around the shoreline on the cattails game? I'm going to start with that game and then I'll move to other ones because that one is probably the most extraordinary Civ pick and strategy pick we've seen in this set. Well, like first, after I finished the games with ACM, Tato asked me, can I help you? I said yes, we joined the Discord and every single GL member joined to help me. So we are all kind of brainstorming, creating the meta there, trying to beat Larry basically. So yeah, the Korean's idea is, I think, Vipers. That was the original Vipers. Unfortunately, he never got to use it. And we were testing, like, <laughs> we had like less than an hour to test it. I, first, I wanted to go Taurage into Turtles. Then we test the game. It was disaster. So in the end, I just went by the feeling <laughs> basically there was no enough preparation to see if it will work out or not there was not time you even you even made cav archers with koreans which i guess if you get the second armor upgrade for free are decent but you've made cav archers all the way through this set take us through i know you you talked to tristan a little bit about how you feel about the unit take us through your your opinions on them after you got the victory here in seven games i mean are you feeling even better about cav archers than you did coming into this only way to win the game is make cav archer basically i mean it's still a bad unit don't get me wrong <laughs> it's still a very very bad unit for the micro but for example on that uh watch map game i don't even know the name uh, uh you want mobility they you probably saw that i couldn't kill a single villager villager moves around and i always miss with cav archer it's basically impossible but being mobile, being annoying, I opened him with the towers and crossbow. So what else can I make? <laughs> Knights would get converted, so Kelly Archers played the annoying role, like not a big commitment, like five, six of them. Won't hurt my economy, but it will give him a lot of trouble. He even had to invest into Magnus, right? Mm -hmm. Um Indians versus Aztecs. You probably went into that, and we're gonna skip all around too, because we're also very emotional here. Uh, but but game two, you you pick your home map at Sacred Springs. Indians have the Shorefish bonus. You seem to have loved that map. But were you at all worried when the game was somewhat even with Indians against Aztecs? Uh, would be if the game was with normal gold spots. I had two castles. I control all the middle gold. I can always poke in and poke out with the ranged units. So I felt confident, especially with the relics. Like It was only a matter of time and he will run out of the gold and I will win the game. All these stuff, man. Um, D Adele, when's the last time in recent memory that you were at the top with a big Age of Empires tournament? Why do you have to bring past, man? Today. Uh, this isn't an insult. 20 minutes ago. <laughs> 20 minutes ago. Let him have his win, <laughs> Tristan. I agree. I'm on the <laughs> outside here. <This> is <laughs> You're like, you won, but tell us about the times you lost. Yes, I lost a lot of games <laughs> about the last several years, but now I have won. Let me celebrate, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Fine. All right. Fine. Well, fine. I'm, I'm going to ask you about, about the actual games today and not the past couple of years, Stout. How do you feel Thank like... You. You you played during this set because it wasn't only the strategy it felt like your execution was on point do you think you're at the best level you've ever been at currently mm, yeah definitely definitely mm. my highest nothing to be proud about yeah but yeah this is my final form i don't believe that final for a second. form <laughs> i yeah, think okay, you still so... have extra ones in the bank so doubt yeah what are you better in Empire Wars than Standard RM? What do you think separated you? Obviously, your your quality at Standard RM, and I think, like you said, you're you're playing as best as you've ever played. But you now have won a Red Bull Wololo Championship, and that is in Empire Wars. So, what was the difference, I suppose, for you that you th that brought you to the top compared to normal RM? Well, there's not a known meta. 
and players have the habits how to play Empire Wars, which is hard to get rid of. So, yeah, strategic mind basically. I went through the. I, I knew what again. I knew what Liri will do every every matchup. I knew he yep. will go. Actually, I knew he will go Incas, but I was expecting the Village War. I was wrong a bit there. But the last game, <laughs> I don't know. The last game, I knew it would be Tatters. I knew it would be timing with the crossbow, and I just like. 20 seconds before the game started, I got the idea. There is only one way, Blue Marches. <laughs> if I go Eagles, I die. There is only one way. <laughs> Let's wall up, get some Eagles, maybe debate him to react. He made a stable, that was good. And <laughs> get those Blue Marches out. Worked out. Yeah. And you are more than familiar with Mayans, so. Yeah, I mean, we've seen more than enough Mayans games with you over the years, but we're not talking about past years. We're talking about this set now, apparently. Thank you. Did you... Yeah, yeah, see, there you go. I guess we won't talk about your victories in the past either. We'll just assume this is your first one here, Doubt. Um, well, we can talk about yeah. like anything... 15 years ago as well. <laughs> <laughs> Was there anything that you were worried about with going plumes there? Were you worried about early pressure for him? Like, what was the risk in going for the past I, I, I cannot even explain, like... Before, uh, I was thinking if you go to the last game, Tatus will beat me, but suddenly I got that idea with Plume Archers and I felt I already won the tournament. Uh, I cannot explain, like, I had that hmm. idea. If I get that castle up, I felt like that's it. So, I, I even, was after super confident. Half, even after the first, after the first castle, you had that inevitable feeling that the matchup would end up leading to you winning? Yeah, yeah, because gold is so spread out, mines are gold dependent, I will have mobility, I will have raiding units. Crossbow of Tatus doesn't scale too well. They're good for beginning. They're not mobile. Castle yeah. is front. He needs to go around the base to hit me. That's a lot of uh, momentum lost. Like uh, everything. I don't know. Like moment of the brilliance. Let's say like that. Well, I well. guess when uh, you've been playing for 20. Oh, no, we're not supposed to mention that. When you've been playing for so long, uh, you have moments of brilliance like that. Eureka moments. And. Uh, you had to be feeling pretty confident once you got the castle up with no eco damage at your base. Yeah, yeah. It's like he didn't know what's going on. And also, it was the last game. It was the cider. If it was like a first game, he would play differently. He would put more pressure. Maybe I would lose few villages. But like everything piled up that this uh, strategy will be perfect at that moment. It's absolutely crazy. So, Dal, when I first started casting Age of Empires, I didn't even know you had a voice. You were never in team speak with people. Dave and I used to make jokes and say you were co-casting with us, and then we would just let there be awkward silence. And then streaming started. You started to stream. You have a great sense of humor. The meme started with you being the Lord, with, with you know, you thinking ballistics is micro, all those things. You know what I'm talking about, all right? Mm-hmm. You are tournament champion, and you had so many people rooting for you. In every tournament, but in this tournament in particular, just watching chat, people were just all about cheering for you. How much does it mean to have that many people behind you when you're playing and, and to finally give them a championship? A lot. It's like, like you said earlier, I disappoint them for the last three, four years. I had some good runs, but never, never went that far. Like top eight was, I think, my maximum. At the beginning, like at HD with Escape Gaming, I used to get to the finals, but never actually won. And yeah. this this is absolutely amazing. Like amount of the messages I'm getting right now, it's it's insane. And appreciate that guys a lot. Yeah, I just want to let I you can know, only imagine. Even with a victory at Doubt, um, you might expect the memes to stop, but I feel like there's gonna be even more memes. <laughs> around you now even with the victory man there's nothing you can do to convince them that you're one of the top players in the world and that they should i'm retiring now with the victory i don't care <laughs> i will not play a single tournament anymore you can never not be the best if you just retire right exactly uh how does it feel that you you not only won red bull wallalo 3 but you beat the champion of the first Red Bull Wallalo, and you beat the champion of the second Red Bull Wallalo. So technically, you're the ultimate Red Bull Wallalo champion. That's a proper way to do it, right? Do you want a crown or something? I wouldn't mind. <laughs> All right, chat, hear that. We Red Bull, we need a crown, please. Sent to Serbia, sent to Doubt's door. That would be appropriate. What With a the fantastic castle on it. showing from you. 
Jeez. And yes, and a half-built castle. And uh, maybe dead villager bodies uh, surrounding it as well. Wow. I, I can tell me and Tristan are both super happy for you and uh and thank you a lot awesome. for that like uh, it, it's crazy moment absolutely crazy for me the support is insane yeah you deserve it man like you i don't know how much you heard before you hopped in here because you were celebrating with your family but you have truly been one of the most entertaining players i've ever been able to watch and in a strategy game to have you constantly thinking outside the box you make every event better win or lose right not that you've lost you never lost you clearly <laughs> that, that this. so i guess I that probably... means i will make the hidden cup event even better right being invited and all that <laughs> you will i can tell no, you you're already invited to hidden i, can well, I, I would be like surprised if i was not <laughs> <laughs> since you brought it up like four times i could tell you that you are one of the invited players for hidden cup four um but well, it's not because of this victory here so um anyways now, congrats again. I, I have to stop talking to you because everything I say comes off as rude when I really don't mean that to be the case. So uh, congrats, celebrate, go crazy, be safe, of course, and uh, enjoy the feeling of being world champ, man. Yeah. Do you have, do you have as any long final as it words, lasts. actually? Do you have any well, final words for the fans before we let you go? Well, I said already several times, thank you guys a lot. Like, the support is amazing. The amount, like, and you cannot believe that, like, phone, Discord, everything that's crazy at that moment when I won the game. Absolutely insane support. And the guys, I cannot describe how much I appreciate that. Well, congratulations, right. Doubt. Amazing performance, amazing tournament. And uh, go celebrate, man. Go have a good time. Thank you guys and see you in the hidden cup. Be a doubt.